Fancy taking a kendo stick to your own son. Oh, another one hits him on the side of the head. And you see Zebrick is feeling his own shoulder. And I think he's had enough. Zebrick is now fighting back. A lot of the strength has been zapped out of him. Trying to whip his father out of the corner. Finally successful in doing so. Mike catches him, tosses him to the outside. Zebrick lands on the apron. And Ricky not, not happy at all by a comment made by one of the fans there. The Stratton just long enough for Zebra to get back on the inside. Ricky Mike goes over the top. Zebra can avoid the leap from there. Here we go now. Zebra can dance and oh! Zebra can with a stunner like maneuver. And Ricky Knight looks to be in trouble. And the WAW roster looking on in, in grave concern there. And the FWA fans, I think, know what's coming next. As indeed do we all, Zebra is going to the top rope, but his father already starting to wake his mate, make his way back to his feet. Zebra comes off the top and catches him with a nice forearm. Sweet Soraya and indeed FWA security distracted by FWA officials. Ricky Knight using the kendo stick. And Soraya there with the three count. Ricky Knight there scoring the win against his son. No thanks at all to the WAW roster in the front row. Soraya was distracted. It was a anything goes contest nonetheless. Ricky Knight using the kendo stick to knock his own son unconscious. And I think we've got some trouble here in the crowd as the WAW roster members are making themselves known. Really, I think we should get the camera off this in a hurry. Well, thankfully the FWA have a strong security team. They're clearing the uh, clearing the venue here before things turn ugly. Ricky Knight there with a big win. Zebra Kid doesn't know what happened. Let's hope they can put this behind them. No, oh, Ricky Knight waving him off. Well, this is a very... Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! I was going to say, I didn't want to swap places with Sweet Zariah for all the money in the world. I thought she was in a terribly difficult position. But finally, she reveals herself, shows her true colours. And I suppose if you think about it, not surprisingly... Reveals herself to be very much on the side of her husband, Rowdy Ricky Knight. And the Zebra Kid finds himself alone in the ring. And indeed alone in life. FWA security checking up on him there. The Zebra Kid's lost his father. Lost his stepmother and he's lost the contest. And we don't need to see this at all. What a terrible situation this is for the Zebra Kid. And really how sad that it had to happen under the glare of the public eye. You, you get out of here, you've done your damage Soraya, you get out of here now. Get these men back to the dressing room immediately. Let's get some help out here for the Zebra Kid. Oh! Zebra Kid there with a big kick indeed to the... Poor member of this FWA security team picking him up now. Come on, Zebra. Oh, power on there, taking our security member out of his boots. 
And I think we didn't see it last time, but it looks like we are going to see it now. Zebra gets patented elbow, the zebra crossing. The crowd calling for it. And I guess you've lost the match, you've lost the family. Still got the support of the fans. Coming for the top rope. Fans very much behind the Zebra Kid. And here we go. Zebra landing. And let's get some help out here for our security member. Well, the crowd applauding the Zebra Kid, but I would want to trade places with him. In the space of a couple of moments, he's lost his father, he's lost his stepmother, he's lost a big match here in the FWA, and he is going to need to go back and reevaluate his life. This contest is set for one fall and has a 20 minute time limit. However, any result other then James Ty forcing Aviv Mayan to submit will mean that on July the 10th at FWA Vendetta, James Ty will have to wrestle wearing a full clown suit. <laughs> Introducing first. these two men to become and his opponent to become inextricably linked to one another. Ty seems to thrive on the attention and the, uh, the ego massaging that Belt provides. In fact, ever since the, the losing streak that caused James Ty to finally snap and turn his back on the man to the FWA, Ty's been looking for ways to boost his climbing self-esteem. And it seems that his unconventional partnership with Mark Belton is one of the ways he's gone about doing it. Here comes his opponent of the evening, a bleeding my hand, a very personal young gentleman here in the FWA. Very popular indeed with the ladies and young men. And a very successful wrestler to build. As the ring announcer said, any result other than James Ty winning by submission will mean that James Tye has to appear here at Rocksbourne for FWA Vendetta in July, dressed in a full clown suit, red nose and all. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, referee Andy Pilgrim has just informed me that Mark Blackstar Belton does not have the manager's license and therefore is not permitted to stay at ringside during the match. Well, that's a very good call. A very good call by referee Andy Pilgrim there. If you don't have a license, you've got no business being at ringside. And the referee has said that James Ty and Mark Belton have a count of 10 for Mark Belton to return to the dressing room. Otherwise, James Ty will forfeit the match. Well, that's the last thing James Sawyer wants to do in his uh, present state of mind. It would be the ultimate humiliation to wrestle in front of the Broxbourne fans here in a clown suit. And Belton scarpers back to the dressing room in a hurry. Ty not happy about it, but let's be, let's be honest, Ty is more than capable of wrestling a beat man without the interference of Mark Five Star Belton. Ty is very much one of the best wrestlers. Well, I was going to say in the FWA, that goes without saying. I would say within the wrestling world, Ty is 
genuinely, in my opinion, one of the very top wrestlers in the wrestling world today. And he wants to get this match over with quickly, forcing a beat by to submit. And indeed, just as much as Mayan, as Ty wants Mayan to submit, Mayan wants to avoid being in, in that kind of position. He breaks the hold in a hurry, and again reaches the ropes before Ty can bend that knee back any further. So as I said, Ty very much one of the top wrestlers uh, in the FWA today. The only thing he lacks is self-confidence. Takes his, uh, his partners in the Mark Belton. Belton now has been sent back to the dressing room area. And I think Ty is still going to put on a great matchup without, without Belton's uh, helping hand, shall we say. But let us not sell Aviv Mayan short. Aviv Mayan has been, in, it's very easy to forget, Mayan has been in the main FWA roster for a little over a year. He has backed down from nobody. He has scored some very big wins here in the company and has already fought men such as the show stealer Alex Shane and indeed the four FWA British heavyweight champion, the anarchist Doug Williams. Mayan has backed down from nobody in his short time here in the company. And he has made a very big name for himself indeed. He's a man who will wrestle toe to toe with anybody. Certainly not the biggest dog in the fight. He's another one of these men from the FWA Academy with such a sound schooling in the basics of wrestling. But really, the sky is the limit for Aviv Mayan. And indeed, popular with fans of all ages here in the FWA, and especially here at Broxbourne. As we see there, Ty weakening the back of uh, of Aviv. And heading with a very crisp suplex. James Ty, very technically proficient. That's a chin lock there. Looks like it might be a chokehold, but the referee in a better position than I am. He says it's fine. Again, Ty dropping knees to the back of my hand, just wrenching the, wrenching the chin and neck back. As I said, weakening the back, no doubt. No doubt to get James Ty, uh, no doubt to get a V my hand to submit eventually to the, the Texas Cloverleaf submission hold, which has become James Ty's finisher of choice over the last several months. And indeed, James Ty has. Uh, got something of an obsession with making Aviv Mayan submit. Ty has faced Mayan on a number of occasions over the last several months, generally in tag team competition. Ty obviously teaming with Belton. Mayan has teamed with the likes of Doug Williams, Ross Jordan and others. Ty has won his fair share of the confrontations, but he has not been able to get Aviv Mayan to submit. And last month, James Ty had the perfect opportunity. He was distracted on the outside and Belton came in, scored the win for his team, but Ty was furious with Mark Belton. For some reason, James Ty's fragile ego demands that he gets a beat my to submit. It's come down to this, the tap out challenge. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if Belton had talked him into it. Because Ty really has got nothing to gain from this. And it would be one heck of a blow to his already shaky self-confidence were he to have to appear in a full in full clown regalia. Nonetheless, he would be very proud if he could be the first man to force a beat my hand to submit. As I said, a beat my hand has not backed out from anyone here in the FWA. And a beat my hand there with a two count. James Ty determined not to be embarrassed. Rolls up my hand, my hand not breaking the hold, gets a cover of his own. And Ty has got to be careful. He nearly won the matchup. But as I said already, if he doesn't win the matchup by submission, then he will still have to wear the clown suit at the next Broxbourne Bourne show. My hand holding on to Ty for dear life, and Ty breaking the hold the only way he knows how. With a tilt-a-well-like manoeuvre. 
ending in a VYAN spine hitting James T James Ty's knee. And again, a VYAN's back has already taken an awful lot of punishment in this matchup. Looks like he's setting a feed man up for the, uh, the surfboard. Again, that is a very, very punishing maneuver indeed. As you can see, the way Ty's got it applied is absolutely textbook. Twisting the ankles, wrenching the knees and the hamstring, putting an awful lot of pressure on the back, pulling the arms back, wrenching the elbows out of the socket. Ty now pulling it back and releasing the arms, but pulling back the neck and the chin of my arm. Just putting pressure on almost every joint in Mayan's body. And Mayan is going to have to find a way out of this move. Or it could be over very early. Well, sheer power there from Mayan. But that took a lot out of him. He's not able to get back up to his feet. He's like staying on him. Drops an elbow to the back. And Ty, very much the dominant factor in this contest. As well he might be. So much on stake for James Ty. whips my arm off the ropes and hits him with a great drop Shut kick. Up. Distracted momentarily by the fans, but staying on my arm as well he might do. Ah, Twisting ah, the legs no. back. No. Ah, Look at the pain etched across the face of Aviv my arm. Reaches the ropes. A referee gets to five. Ty still not breaking the hole. He's got to be careful. And deep Corbin suffering no nonsense. Ty gets a yellow card, and he has got to be careful. Because to be quite frank, he was lucky not to get disqualified there and then. And that is the last thing that James Ty wants. Nonetheless, a good call by uh, referee Andy Quilden. And the fans there, very witty indeed. Getting on James Ty's back as they are singing their own inimitable version of the circus theme tune. Cover there from James Ty remembers. He remembers there that if he, he can win the match with a, a one, two, three, but he needs to get that submission. And he breaks the hold voluntarily. Not often you'll see that in a wrestling contest. Ty looking like he was going for the Titanic. Aviv Mayan, not worn down enough for that yet. And Mayan with the submission hold of his own. Nonetheless, Ty powering out of it. Ty, I have to say, one of the best built young athletes uh, currently in the FWA. Very athletic, very well built. Nonetheless, finding himself in a compromising position at the moment. Ty struggling to, to reach back for the ropes. I think he may have raped the eyes of Aviv Mayan. And that will that will break any hole. Indeed, you don't have to be a technical whiz to go for the eyes. Aviv Mayan with some powerful blows there, taking Ty off his feet. And now Ty's in trouble. Aviv Mayan with a cover gets the two count. And we are seeing two of the top young stars in British wrestling today give us everything they've got. Aviv Mayan with a great drop kick there. Tie back on the mat, cover from my hand. Just the one count is going to take a lot more than that to put James Tie down. And here at Crunch 2005, we are having a great night. Tie gets whipped into the top turnbuckle, 
catches himself, gets the cover, lifts my hand up, wrenches him over, tie it. Well, tie finding himself now in a compromising position indeed, and Amir beat my hand. Very much impressing here in this context. Of course, Saveed Mayan under no compunction at all to win by submission. He would just like to show James Ty that he's the better man. And indeed, here in the FWA, on any given night, any man might be better than any other. Mayan goes for the cover. Didn't hook the leg in time, and James Ty kicks out. And the crowd really getting on the back of James Ty. They would love to see this young man humiliated. Ty has had his fair share of problems with the fans of the FWA. Indeed, not so long ago, he was one of the more popular men here. But after going absolutely livid, and after aligning himself with uh, the questionable Mark Five Star Belton, the fans have seen James Ty for, for what he is. And that is a... Questionable, well, a, a sad young man. Got all the tools to make it in this industry. Indeed, come very close on a couple of occasions to winning the big one. But Ty lacks that confidence in himself to really let himself go. And I've even now looking to capitalize. Lee Brooks over the top rope and hits Ty with a Hurricane Rana on the outside. And the pain is etched all over the face of both men. They've got a 20 count here in the FWA to get back into the ring. And they just might need it. Tie back in on 11. Aviv Mayan follows with a cover, hooks the leg. Didn't have the strength to hold James Ty down though. Crowd now rallying behind the beat Mayan, who makes his way in a single bound to the top row, comes up the top with a cross body, gets the cover. But just the two count, and again, James Ty, so much at the line, so much at stake for this young man. But he is digging deep within to avoid the cover, to avoid going down for the three. Another big European uppercut from Aviv Mayan. Clearly not as powerful as uh, James Ty, but every bit as athletic. And now James Ty going for the torture round, and he has got that move applied perfectly. And this could well be it for, for Aviv. Referee asking if he wants to submit. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was all over here and now. Ty adding his own aeroplane to spin twist, lands on his knees. Again, down to the knees, just wrenching the spine and the lower back of Aviv Mayan. Mayan almost choking himself out there. And another very good, very, very powerful submission hold from James Ty. Ty has clearly been training very hard for this contest. We've seen a number of a number of great submission holds from Ty. And now Ty, like a monster that can smell his fallen prey, picks a Mayan up, launches him out into the other corner, psyching himself up, and follows up with a nice double knee to the abdomen of Mayan. Hooks him with a suplex. Keeps a hold. And again, instead of going for the cover, follows through. Aviv Mayan says no. And the fans here solidly behind Aviv Mayan. The youngster from Newport, South Wales. 
Please don't tap there, Sam. And it appears to be having an effect because Mayan is getting a second wind of sorts and finds a way out of that move. Ty, though, still with the upper hand for the time being. Telegraphed that manoeuvre somewhat. Ty with some uppercuts of his own. And I think Ty's had enough. What, what strength there from James Ty. He is lifting my hand clean above his head. And a military press slam sends my hand down to the canvas. Ty now going up to the top turnbuckle. This might be a mistake. We don't see Ty coming off the top too often. Mayan up to his feet. Gets caught with a drop kick. And that hurt Mayan. But James Ty appeared to land rather nastily on his back. Notwithstanding, James Ty, the first man back up to his feet here. Aviv Mayan looks to be in a lot of trouble. Here at Crunch 2005, he gets whipped into the turnbuckles. Nonetheless, has enough presence of mind to avoid the onslaught of James Ty. Sets himself up with a tornado DDT. Ty obviously had that move well scouted. Oh! Mayan lands hard on the back of his head. And here we see the figure four Texas Pro Belief. Mayan fights and Ty is unable to apply it fully. Powerful power bomb there. Sheer brute force. And James Ty mocking his fallen opponent with a slow hand clap. Draws his thumb slowly across his neck and says that's it, it's all over. And if he hooks this move, it absolutely will be. Mayan with the presence of mind to do everything he can to struggle out of it. But here we see it. Well, here we go, 90 minutes remaining. 90 minutes gone by, and there are just 60 seconds remaining. Aviv Mayan is in the figure four globally for Texas globally. And Mayan has got less than 60 seconds to survive the James Ty tap out challenge. Ty has got his move on. Ty has got the move on. Aviv Mayan says no. And we are down to 30 seconds. 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds remaining. Aviv Mayan has been in this hold now for over 30 seconds. And now James Ty dragging him into the middle of the ring. And that has to be it. There is no way on earth that Vee Mayan can hold on. We have seen the we have seen so many people. We have seen so many people give out to hack to this move. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's it, Aviv Mayan's tapping out. But did the bell ring first? And the winner of the match is. Well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. The count down from 10, the bell rung, and I think the beat my hand rung. A beat my hand definitely tapped out. But I am not sure. I am not sure exactly what happened. We are getting word from the back. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just speaking. I'm watching from upstairs, or watching the end of the match. Again, we've got to get to the replay. Well, we've got an instant replay here in the FWA now. We're waiting for word to come through from the uh, FWA officials. Aviv Mayan was in that global leaf hold for over 60 seconds. Okay, Ralph, I'm gonna... No one would have been surprised to see him tap out. Indeed, he did tap out. Belton's now back out there, he's put his oar in. But we're getting the word now through that the bell already rung. So, okay. Well, referee Andy Quill is getting both of them back to their respective teams. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and gentlemen, I have been formed by us rushing through the defeat land, Pete Chappell. Well, there we go, it's a, a victory. Uh, however, Hang on a second. The bells have already rung. Therefore, this match is a time limit draw, and the winner of the Chappell Challenge is a Pete Mayan. Well, here we go, a time limit draw. A Pete Mayan was in the closing bowl for over 60 seconds. He did submit. But the bell has rung. Therefore, the official contest result is a time limit draw. The B player walks away from the Tap Out Challenge. Victor James Tyler must wrestle at the FWA Vendetta here across in July in a full crown suit. to giving up huge amounts of height and weight in most matchups. However, in this tournament, Spud is uh, not giving up very much height or weight at all to any of the competitors, and indeed has to be considered one of the favorites to win the belt. The popular Max Voltage first came to the attention of France in the FWA last month when he appeared in the open invitational matchup against Jack Storm. Voltage impressed so much that he was booked for the Morgan Show and won himself a place in the FWA Flyweight Tournament. And indeed, last month at Morgan, Max Voltage beat his trainer from the FWA Academy, the specialist Mark Sloan. And on the very same show, Spud beat Jack Storm. These two men face each other tonight in what promises to be a hard hitting, very fast paced contest. And the winner of which will receive a spot in the final of the tournament to crown. To crown the first ever FWA flyweight champion. 
Goldridge now finds himself in trouble on the outside. Spud runs off the ropes and great score! Voltage smashing the back of his skull hard into the steel railings there at ringside. And Spud not landing too well either. This is the kind of action you will see throughout the FWA Flyweight Tournament. And no matter who wins, we are going to have one head of a deserving champion cover there from Spud. Just gets the two. Referee Andy Quilden doing a great job in this contest. Spud now has Max Voltage in the corner, whips him out. Max gets the legs up, goes to the top, nice moves up there. Can he cover? Does one, two. Not able to get all of it. Spud kicks out there. Voltage ducks the clothesline. Goes for the sunset flip. Spud sees it coming. Cover. Two. Reversal. And another two count there from Max Voltage. Both these men very evenly paced here. Nice cover there from Max Voltage. Very unique pinning predicament there. Nonetheless, Spud able to kick out. And this action is so incredibly fast paced. Super kick there from Spud slows the action down considerably. Cover hooks the leg. That should be all, but Max Voltage kicking out there. Voltage, a newcomer to the main academy shows, but we have seen him in the FW Academy down in Portsmouth for the last several years. Indeed, Voltage started at the FW Academy when he was no older than 13 or 14 years old. Much like Spud, he was the smallest man in the class. He had everything against him, but he had that un unquantifiable passion and desire to succeed. He's had a really sound schooling in the academy. And now is hoping to make a name for himself in this FWA flyweight tournament. And what a way to introduce himself to the fans that if he could become the first ever flyweight champion. Indeed, he's not going to get a better shot than this. If he beats Spud, he will go through to the final of this tournament. Well, Quilden admonishing uh, Spud for not breaking the hold too quickly. I don't think Spud is doing that in bad sport. I think he's just so wrapped up in this contest. Because Spud, as successful as he has been in the FWA in the last several months, has not yet had a chance to taste championship gold. And despite all the kudos that he has received from the fans, from the management, from the FWA officials and matchmakers, he would love nothing more than championship glory. Drop kick there from Max Voltage, Spud back up to his feet. Voltage now goes for the cover. Spud kicks out after two. A lot of high risk maneuvers in this matchup. Neither man willing to stay down for the count of three. Voltage goes to the top, Spud catches him. Max landing on his feet, goes up again. This time catches Spud with a, a nice left hook. Voltage on the outside, pulled up from the top rope, and Spud must be down. Spud very wisely. Rolling to the outside there where he cannot be pinned. Voltage looking for Spud. Realising he's out of the ring. And now that move which took as much out of Voltage as it did out of Spud. Spud making his way out to the entranceway. Voltage on the top row. Comes off the top and keepers creepers. Both men down. And that has got to be all. Referee come on check on these men. Check on these men, Spud grasping his right elbow, shaking some feeling back into it. And Voltage holding his lower, lower back and grimacing. He is in considerable pain, came off the top rope. Both men landing hard on the outside. Voltage rolled Spud back into the ring first. Going for the Max Factor, his finishing move. Spud knew that was coming. Catches Voltage. And hits him with a boot to the back of the head. Here we go now. Voltage lands hard on the back of his skull. Cover one, two. And Max kicks out. Voltage made a big mistake there. He called for his finishing manoeuvre. 
Now certainly the crowd heard it, the referee heard it, but Spud heard it. Spud knew what was coming. He was able to reverse the hold. And now Max Volkic finds himself in a lot of trouble. Up against the ropes, gets whipped off the top. Ooh! Voltage now evening things up somewhat. And Spud takes nothing but knee. Spud landing face first. Voltage going for the cover. Two, three. No, it's going to take more than that to put Spud away. Referee quilled in there saying the shoulder was up. Voltage again going through his patented finishing maneuver. The Max Factor again. Calls it out, hits it this time, that's got to be all. Does he have the strength to cover Spud? Spud has to be out of it. Well, Voltage thinking better. He's thinking he's going to make sure, comes off the top rope. Well, Max wanted to put Spud away, but Spud able to get out of the way. Oh, Spud now. Here we go, here it is. Holy Spud, that has got to be it. Max now in the middle of the ring. Spud going to the top rope. We are going to see a twisting corkscrew moonsault. Here we go, the cover one, two, three, and Spud makes his way through to the final of the FWA flyweight tournament. Who will he face? We will have to find out in the next show. But for now, we know that Spud has a 50-50 shot at being the first ever FWA flyweight tournament champion. Big win here for Spud. Max Volkin did himself, did himself no shame at all, and he can make his way back to the FWA Academy with his head held high. But at the end of the day, it was Spud who emerged victorious. And many congratulations to Spud for a big win here, the opening contest of FWA Crunch 2005. Spud looking over his fallen foe, helping him back to his feet. Both men very good friends. Indeed, Voltage, I know, you Spud as somewhat of an inspirational figure. Both men very evenly, very evenly matched. Indeed, in the end, it was only the inexperience of Max Voltage who hit Spud with his finishing maneuver, the Max Factor. Rather than go to the cover when he had the opportunity, he wanted to make sure, with a high risk maneuver on the top rope, Spud had just enough wit about him to. Uh, to roll out of the way, Spud hitting his finishing maneuver. One, two, three, it was all over. Spud goes through to the final of the FWA Flyweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest has a 30 minute time limit, is set for one fall, and is a street fight. The rules are, there are no rules. However, Pinfalls or submissions must take place within the confines of the wrestling ring. Introducing first the special guest referee for the bout, Sweet Soraya! Well, Sweet Soraya has got a very heavy emotional investment indeed in this contest. She is the husband of Ricky Knight and the stepmother of the Zebra Kid, who is the son of Ricky Knight. And really, the storyline behind this matchup is more complicated than an episode of Family Affairs. Going back, of course, to Carpe D in June 2004 at the Brent Town Hall. Introducing folks. Indeed, Sweet Soraya looks like she is pondering her priorities very keenly indeed. Where will her loyalties lie? The disaster, Ricky As I said, the story for this contest goes back nearly a year to Carpe Diem, Brent Town Hall, June 2004. The Zebra Kid had a shot at the FWA British Heavyweight title against the anarchist Doug Williams. He chose his father, Ricky Knight, to accompany him and stand in his corner. And in the end, Ricky Knight turned against his own son and cost him a shot at the FWA belt. Zebra Kid assumed it was an accident, 
assumed that Ricky Knight didn't know what he was doing, and it led to a match the next month with Vendetta and Brooksville, and it turned into a bloody and violent war, ending only when the younger son of Ricky Knight, the brother of the Zebra Kid, Jack Zodiac, interjected himself. He couldn't stand seeing two members of his own family entrenched in a blood feud. Stepped inside the ring, he's only 12, 13 years old. They got in the middle of things. The Zebra Kid accidentally super kicked him square in the jaw. But the Zebra Kid tended to his fallen younger brother. Brownie Ricky Knight showed no concern at all for his youngest son. Covered the Zebra Kid and got the win. And that leads almost to tonight. Well, making his way to the ring shortly. Well, hang on a second. We saw as Rowdy Ricky Knight came out. Those are members of the WAW roster. FWA security making sure that things don't, don't get out of hand. And here comes the Zebra Kid. It's fantastic to see him back in the FWA. As I said, he had a very violent feud with his father, Rowdy Ricky Knight of Vendetta last year. Zebra Kid, uh, Made some serious personal problems which took him away from aggression and commitment for several months. He returned a, a new, a reformed man to the FWA and had a great match against Chris Hero, at the end of which it appeared that Zebra Kid had made his peace with the rally one. But it wasn't to be. Knight felt that Zebra Kid had brought shame on the family. And said that this feud was far from over. Well, it's no secret who the FWA fans are getting behind. It is, of course, the Zebra Kid. Certainly got away with words, that gentleman, I'll tell you that. Well, neither men like to back down from a fight, but frankly, it might be for the best. I wonder what Ricky Knight's going to offer the Zebra Kid. If you just get down on me and say, sorry, Dad. Somehow, I don't see that happening. You say, sorry, Dad. I have been a bit of a prat. Well, WAW, of course, the promotion owned by Rowdy Ricky Knight. Zebra Kid certainly no stranger to either promotion. But it's really in the FWA that the Zebra Kid has made a name for himself. Impressing fans alike with, well, Rowdy Ricky Knight there attacking before the bell. Impressing fans and matchmakers alike, winning the All England Championship and indeed holding the belt for the better part of a year. Certainly one of the most successful All England champions in FWA history. But Rowdy Ricky Knight now feeling no other way to get to his son but with a without a street fight. Zebra Kid rallying to get the fans behind him. I don't think he's gonna have to try too hard. The fans here in the FWA, particularly at Roxbourne, love the Zebra Kid. And this man used to love the Zebra Kid. It's his father, Rowdy Ricky Knight. How can you do that to your son? He's hitting him square in the skull with a kendo stick. They're the stars of the WAW. 
Oh, now they managed to score such good tickets. Rowdy Ricky Knight throwing Zebra to the outside, and already this match is going to get ugly. Zebra Kid gets whipped into the front guardrail. Now Zebra Kid throwing head first into the steel chair. And Ricky Knight showing no remorse at all. And all Sweet Soraya can do is look on. This is a street fight sanctioned by the FWA. Anything goes. The only, the only concession to normality is that the pinfall or submission has to take place within the confines of the squared circle. But as it is, anything goes, including a power slam to the wooden floor. Anything goes. And now Ricky Knight hitting his own son with a steel chair. As Soraya looks on. Indeed, so many times we've seen these two. So many times we've seen these two on the brink of, of making up. If they wanted to, they could win any tag team belt in the land. What a great father-son combination they could be. Both now I know deep down have to be proud of each other, but my goodness, they are fighting like they don't know each other. Zebra Kid there emptying the content of the crash bag that he bought to the ring. And inside is a steel baking tray and a frying pan, I think, and he hits his own father over the head with him. Debris flying everywhere. And Soraya pleading with both men to go easy on each other. Desperate for both men to get this back into the ring and let it be over. Oh, Ricky Knight just slapping his own son with a steel cooking sheet. And Zebra Kid taking a real pounding here. Already in the early goings of this matchup, neither man holding anything back. And several international objects coming into play here, including the ring bell. Knight now going into the timekeeper's table. And the Zebra Kid with a big chair to the left arm of Ricky Knight. Now clubbing him with lefts and rights to the skull. And the upper spine. Oh, but it's the low blow that cuts the Zebra Kid off. The zebra Kid now trying to put some distance between himself and his father as he recovers. Knight stays on him, tosses him into the crowd. And this could, could turn ugly in a hurry. Ricky Knight now leading his son up the stairs here at the Bronx One Civic Hall. Zebra Kid with a nice kick. And these fans need to get out of the way quickly, and so does our cameraman. Zebra Kid showing the after effects of a low blow. Picks up his own father and slams him down on the hard, cold floor. Fans solidly behind the Zebra Kid. But Ricky Knight is such a hostile, fiery competitor. I almost think he gets off on the fans' anger, on, on the fans' negativity. Close one there, takes him out of his boots. And the Zebra Kid signals that he's got another steel sheet in his bag. Ricky Knight taking it in his stride almost and the look on his face says it all and Soraya looks like she can't take much more of this she is in between a rock and a hard place ooh the kendo stick to the groin this might be a no disqualification matchup and anything goes street fight but really, for the sake of both men's well-being, Soraya might just want to call an end to this right now. Zebra Kid working over his father in the corner. Goes once again for the steel chair. 
Laying it in the crotch area, his father drops a big boot in. And Ricky Knight took one heck of a forceful blow there. And the fans demanded one more time. And I think they just might see it. Ooh! Not if Ricky Knight has anything to say about it. Knight now sets his son up for a DDT. And the Zebra Kid landed hard on one of the steel chairs. Soraya goes for the cover. Zebra Kid able to kick out somehow. And even though this is father against son, even though both men have strong family ties against each other, even though they have known each other all their lives, neither man holding anything back, neither man going easy on the other, and Zebra can get slammed the back of his skull, landing hard on the steel chair. And Ricky Knight gets the cover, and thankfully this one is over too. Three and here we go, the Zebra Kid is kicked out. I don't know if he's not thinking, I don't know if it's a, a matter of pride or what, but the Zebra Kid kicking out there, despite the fact that the back of his skull was nearly cracked clean open on one of the FWA ringside steel chairs. Nonetheless, Zebra Kid fights back, nice scoop slam there. And I don't like the look of this one little bit, and neither does Sweet Soraya, who has flung the ring. And Ricky Knight's groin tasted steel, meeting Kendo Stick. Ooh. And that's going to take Zebra Kid down in a hurry. Zebra Kid again taking a barrel to the outside in this kind of matchup, probably not for the rest, more likely to get hold of another illegal object. Doesn't work on this occasion as Ricky Knight pounds him into the steel railing. And once again, this matchup finds itself amongst you, the FWA fans. Thankfully, FWA security on hand to make sure this one doesn't get too far out of hand. As a Civic Hall rubbish bin comes into play. Oh my goodness! Ricky Knight just pounding his son over the skull with a rubbish bin from the Civic Hall. And you can hear the dueling FWA WAW chance. Of course, it's about 300 to 1. The FWA faithful. Very solidly behind the Frontier Wrestling Alliance. And as we saw, it's only the very select few members of the WAW roster in the front row. Sticking up for their man, their boss, Rowdy Ricky Knight. As well, they might, to be fair. Let's just hope they don't get physically involved in the confrontation. As I said, this match very nearly a year in the making. And what an epic battle it has turned into so far. Zebra Kid now attempting to crotch his own father on the ring post. Ricky Knight trying to block it. Zebra can get this. Ooh. Knight's ankle there. I thought he was going for the crotch, but the ankle might be even more devastating. If Ricky Knight cannot stand, there's no way he can cover his own son. And now Zebra Kid choking out his own father with a t-shirt. And the t-shirt comes off and we can see that the Zebra Kid is in great shape. Goes to his father off the ropes. Zebra Kid ducks the clothesline. Both men have the same idea. Both men down. And Soraya, not, not sure what to do, makes the count. Fans urging Zebra Kid up to his feet. Soraya already up to seven. Knight now with a count. Just a two count there as the Zebra Kid kicks out. Ironically, if it wasn't for his father, Rowdy Ricky Knight, then uh, the Zebra Kid never would have even wrestled for the Frontier Wrestling Alliance. Indeed, Ricky Knight phoned in the Talk Sport Wrestling Radio Show several years ago. 
and suggested the seventh He said, I've got a great young talent for you. Why not bring him in? And he did, and the rest, as they say, is history. But Zebra Kid became so successful and made such a big star for himself, such a big name in the FWA that Brownie Ricky Knight got jealous. He wanted him back. He wanted him to be the centre point of the WAW. And now it's led slowly over time to this devastating brawl. Two grown men hitting each other as hard as is humanly possible with cooking implements. Ricky Knight obviously with much more experience than the Zebra Kid. Almost certainly taught him everything he knows. But the Zebra Kid has that intangible factor. That being the support of the FWA fans. Knight with a kendo stick to the outside. What a sadistic move. In good conscience, how can one man do that to another, much less his own son? Frankly, I'm disgusted by the actions of Reggie Knight in this contest. a lot of punishment that close I've seen men tap out in seconds in that close race somehow my hand managed to hold on for over 60 seconds and walk away with a victory
Dave Vanson showing off the belt that means the world to him. He has held it for a long time. And he intends to hold it for a lot longer. Good mood tonight. Must have caught a reflection of himself in the mirror. Seen his favourite wrestler himself. Leroy from Cade, on the other hand, in stark contrast, is all business. He knows what a great opportunity this is for him. And he is determined not to get drawn into the mind games of Hay Vanson. Clean handshake. Nonetheless, Ray Branson shows that he is not to be trusted. And as Leroy Kincaid was making his way back to the corner, Ray Branson attacked him from behind. The boot to the back of the head. And now the spinning discus punch takes uh, Kincaid down. Oh, and here we go, the cocky histrionics of the South City Thriller. The sniper-like rifle. Kincaid determined not to be drawn into these childish games. Monkey will have the corner. And I'm impressed by the youngster Leroy Kincaid, who is built. Looks to me like he might have taken uh, Hey Banton off guard as well. Banton in no hurry to look up with this youngster all of a sudden. Both men just squaring off, trying to get the measure of each other. Vanson uh, offering Leroy the test of strength. I was going to say, I wouldn't want to go strength of strength, even if I was a Vance with Leroy Kincaid. Vanson showing again that he is not to be trusted. And also showing the experience that comes with being the All England champion. Nonetheless, Leroy Kincaid showing that he is giving it his all tonight, going over the top rope with a cross body that took. Hey, Vanson out, and Vanson landing hard on the outside here at the Roxbourne and Civic Hall. Leroy Kincaid impressing very much. And Vanson must be on the outside now, rethinking his game plan. As referee Andy Quilder makes the 20 count. Vanson back up now to the, uh, the ring apron, gingerly making his way back in and out of the ring. And he's in no rush for this contest to, uh, to continue. And I think he has severely underestimated Leroy Kincaid. Again, Vanson back into the ring, breaks the referee's count. And now he wants to fight. Again, we've seen very little of Kincaid in, here in the FWA. He spent most of his time wrestling, uh, well, appearing as the bodyguard of the show Steel Alex Shane. However, he did impress very much at the, uh, the Gold Rush show. He won the dark match to win uh, the last spot in the Gold Rush Battle Royal. Had to, uh, had to be, in fairness, the rank outside of the back contest. Nonetheless, impressed very much, and indeed showed showed very well for himself in that battle royal. <laughs> However, the show stealer appears to have got himself a new security entourage, and uh, we've seen already this evening here what's happened to two of the previous ones. They have been. Their contracts have been purchased by the twisted genius Dean Ayers, that's right. I'm talking about Sticks and Martin Stone. 
they also uh, started out life here in the FWA as members of Alex Shane's security posse. And now they appear to be in line uh, as the number one contenders for the FWA tag team belt. If Leroy and Kincaid can beat uh, Hay Burton tonight, he might well find himself number one contender for the All England title. The fans have seen little of Leroy and Kincaid, but it seems to me they they are good judges of quality and they like what they see here in uh, in Leroy Kincaid. And Hay Vanson begging off. Leroy Kincaid not giving him an inch. Oh my goodness! Hay Vanson reversing that and a nice belly to back suplex on the outside. And Kincaid landing nastily. Those mats offer very little protection indeed. Ooh. And that echoed all the way around the Bloxbourne and Civic Hall and surrounding areas. Well, Hey Vanson uh, discarding his opponent into the steel railings. And I think the referee needs to get some control over this contest. It's all very well giving them the 20 count. But we want to see, uh, well, the one thing we don't want to see is one man getting hurt. And if this match gets out of control, as it is doing, then uh, somebody could get seriously injured, and I don't want that to happen to either man. And indeed, referee Andy Quilden trying to get some semblance of order back to this contest. And again now with the upper hand. Big knee to the back. Nice suplex. Oh, and Leroy Kincaid gets hit hard there. With a running clothesline. The cover now from the South City Thriller. That should be it. But Kincaid has the foot in the ropes. And the hole gets broken. And indeed, Hay Branson himself also has his uh, his links with the South City, with the show Steel Alex Shane, the current FWA British Heavyweight Champion. And we'll be seeing the show Steel on action shortly here in a three way matchup against former FWA champion, the anarchist Doug Williams, and the Wonder Kid Johnny Storm. Hey, Vance, and taking the microphone. He hasn't got a bad voice, I'll give him that. But this is a wrestling match, not karaoke night at the pub. I've never seen anything so ridiculous. That song recorded recently for charity. Hey, Vanson, as we know, hasn't got a charitable bone in his body. Goes up and under. 
Johnson really let his arrogance get the better of him there. Don't know who he's trying to prove himself to. But there is no call for singing in a wrestling match. Oh my goodness! Did you see how he bounced and landed hard on the back of his neck? And that has got to be all. Leroy Kincaid now going up to the top row. And a spinning corkscrew dive there. That should be all. Kincaid has to get the cover. Goes down now, hooks the leg. One, two, three. And what a big victory now. And this is on time for Leroy Kincaid. He must now fully consider himself a top contender to the All England Championship. What an impressive match up there by Leroy Kincaid. And Hay Banton's impromptu karaoke session cost him dearly. Save it for Thursday evenings down the Dolphin Feathers. Well, the fans are certainly impressed by Leroy Kincaid. And Hay Banton severely underestimated his opponent on this occasion. Kincaid signal that he would like to shot at the belt as well as White. He's certainly proven that he is uh, more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Nate Banton. And if anyone deserves a shot at the belt, he's got to be one of the top men, one of the front of the queue. And Nate Banton, for a sarcastic round of applause, but you know but behind the cocky veneer of the South Pacific Thriller, he has got to be shaken a little bit. Certainly not expecting to lose here tonight. Nonetheless, Vanson walking away from the Brooksbourne Civic Hall, still the All England champion. Show Steeler for the belt, this time in a three-way match. 
with former champ Yannick Scott Williams. He shows the ironic trait, never should have confidence to begin with. He's really come on leaps and bounds since winning the belt. He feels that this championship is a fine skin as a wrestler. And indeed, it just should do. It means that he is the best wrestler in the country. The best wrestler in the FWA. The belt has been defended in Japan, in the USA, throughout the country. Alex Shane holding that belt means that he is one of the best wrestlers wrestling today. But it also means that he is a marked man. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is set for one fall with a one hour time limit. The rules are as follows. All three men will start in the ring at the same time. The winner will be the man who scores a pinfall or submission over one of the other wrestlers. This therefore means that Alex Shane does not necessarily have to be pinned to lose the championship. Introducing first to my left, the challenger from Maidstone, Kent. He is the former FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the Anarchist, Doug Williams. Doug Williams, still rally, very popular indeed with the crowd here in the FWA. And to my right, from Harlow and Essex, yeah! he is the Wonder Kid, Johnny Storm! But very few men can compete with the Wonder Kid in terms of uh, popularity. And finally, he is the current and reigning BCW Scottish Heavyweight Champion. He is also the current and reigning GPW Northwest Heavyweight Champion. He is the current and reigning OPWO Heavyweight Champion. He is also the current and reigning Ramwa Southern Area Heavyweight Champion. And he is your current and reigning FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the show stealer, Alex Shane. Well, that is very impressive indeed. Nonetheless, not endearing himself to the fans here at Roxbourne. Let's get out all the bars. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Shane has requested that you please stand to your feet for the singing of the national anthem. to be drawn into the machinations of the show stealer Alex Shane and indeed it's rare that a crowd are encouraged to sing the national anthem with the use of the F word for which I can only apologise referee Steve Linsky showing the belt around that's what this match is for the FWA British Heavyweight Championship Shane holds it, Williams has held it, and Storm would dearly love to hold it. The referees check all, all three men for foreign objects. They're clean to the match starts. And unsurprisingly, both men turn to the show stealer. And it's not often in a championship match that you find the champion at a disadvantage, but here he is for several reasons, not the least of which being, as we heard in the introductions, that the champion does not have to be pinned to lose the match. But also, what with it being a three-way match, I think he's at a double disadvantage, because of course, both men want to pick him. 
up. That said, it could well play to his advantage as well, because neither of his opponents want to let the other man get the cover. And if they turn to infighting, as they are at the moment, then Shane just might be able to steal a victory and indeed sit, sit back and let them destroy each other. Williams holding down the rope. Shane goes to the outside. And now Johnny Storm signaling that he's going to join him over the top. Great stop! Goodness gracious. Johnny Storm over the top rope, landing hard on the show stealer. Storm now back in the ring. Wrestling the anarchist Doug Williams. Williams twisting the ankle and bending the knee. Storm with a nice kick to the back. Williams not relinquishing the hold. And as we all know, Williams absolutely perhaps the soundest technical wrestler in the country. Storm is a great high flyer. Very competent grappler indeed, one of the best. But for pure scientific wrestling skills, there are very few who can compare to the anarchist Doug Williams. I'm concerned about the show stealer. Alex Shane does not appear to have moved since Johnny Storm flew over the top rope and landed on him, sending him crashing back first to the steel railings. There the show stealer is. He is breathing heavily. Meanwhile, back in the ring, Williams having his way with Johnny Storm. Storm chopping the nipple, trying to break out of the hole. Williams takes the arms away from Storm. Williams is a scientific master. Whips Storm out of the ropes, into the corner, Storm saw it coming, got the leg up, goes over the top of the cover, two, reversal again, another cover, just gets the two, now Storm on top, a series of very near falls in the early going to this contest, we see why this matchup does not favour the show stealer at all, as Shane is on the outside of the ring, while two men who are not the champion fight for the belt. Storm now going for the sunset flip, rolls Williams over, both men with the cover, and again Linsky counting both men down and both men with a shoulder up at the same time, very unique pinning combination, Shane finally making his way back into the ring, gets taken out instantly with a shot to the face, and again both men stamping the feet of Alex Shane, before turning back to each other. Shane's out enough. Knocks the two challengers down with a double clothesline. Shane really needs to stop wrestling like the champion if he wants to retain this belt. Johnny Storm now on the ring apron. Booted to the outside by Shane. Williams comes over for the show stealer. Catches a neck breaker for his troubles. Shane now with a cover, hooks the leg, and here we go. Just the two count. Another cover. And another two count again. As Doug Williams kicks out. Alex Shane now wrestling the man he beat for the belt at British Uprising 3 at the Coventry Sky Dome. It wasn't for the botched interference of the returning Ulf Herman. And Doug Williams may still be the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. In fact, we haven't seen Ulf Herman since Uprising 3. And I would be interested to see. Oh my goodness, the 619 there from Johnny Storm. As I said, we haven't seen much of Ulf Herman since Uprising 3. And when we have seen him, despite the fact that he teamed with the anarchist of Williams, they did not seem to be on the same page for the entirety of that contest. 
And indeed, Williams finding it very hard to trust the man who, albeit inadvertently, cost him his most prized possession, that being the FWA British Heavyweight Championship. Nonetheless, the show steal Alex Shane took the advantage afforded to him. And he has been a fighting champion wrestling across the country and indeed in a number of promotions putting the belt on the line. A storm again to the outside. And Williams trying to drag the show stealer out with them. Succeeds with a nice uppercut. Here comes Johnny Storm with a kick to the kick to the midsection. And I think Williams got the brunt of that. And as you can see, I believe the back of his head hit hard on the steel railings. And that might need to be that might need to be checked out. That does not look good for the Anakin Stug Williams. Stealing to flesh just does not go. Nonetheless, Storm plays the advantage. Great move by the Wonder Kid. Back to his feet. Shane trapped in the corner. Storm with the forearm. And I think we've seen this move already. He's got him in the headlock. Some nice kicks. And the knee to the, knee to the face. Very few men can wrestle as fast pegs to match as Johnny Storm. Storm with a cover, that could have been enough. Shane has uh, Shane has got those long arms and he was able to, to reach to the bottom rope and break the pinfall. And referee Steve Linsky, the senior official in the FWO, was in a good position. And he saw that. Storm catching himself, lands on his feet. Now the anarchist finally trying to crawl back into the ring. But he was very lucky to avoid uh, permanent injury when the back of his head landed hard on the steel railings just moments ago. Shane now with the abdominal stretch and he was using the top rope there to gain extra leverage. That's an illegal maneuver, the referee didn't spot it. Shane also using his elbow Oh, and now the Anarchist back in the fray of things. And we have got a nice three way move here. Storm and Williams once again back on the same page, but not for long. It's really every man for himself here. Williams takes Storm down. Storm ducks. And a high knee to the show stealer. Alex Shane once again back on the outside. And I'm getting a sense of deja vu. I think Doug Williams saw that coming, and this time. Williams not complicit in Storm's plans. And Williams now with a cover. But again, just the two count. Not enough to keep Johnny Storm down. And the anarchist is going to have to try harder than that. If he wants to recapture the belt that means so much to him. A series of knees off the bottom rope might be enough to do it. The cover comes now. One, two... But the show stealer, but the Wonder Kid kicks out. Johnny Storm there kicking out. And the show stealer is in trouble. It looks like he may have re aggravated that back injury that kept him out of the sport for over a year. Indeed, if the show stealer has an Achilles heel, it's his neck, which was severely weakened, and of course, the, uh, the spine. Johnny Storm impressing uh, the anarchist Doug Williams, nonetheless gets caught in a waistlock, charged into the ropes, Williams rolls over. I'm not even going to see the chaos theory. Johnny Storm had that move well scouted and moves it into a DDT of his own, gets the cover. And if we had seen the chaos theory, I've got no doubt in my mind that we would have a new FWA British heavyweight champion. As it stands, the two challengers lying in the ring and our FWA champion lying in considerable pain on the outside. If this had been a regular matchup, then the champion would have lost by count out some time ago. Williams reverses. Storm into the turnbuckles. And now Shane lands hard on his back. 
Storm on the top ropes. Williams with the cover. Gets the two count. Sean Steeler kicks out. Storm unable to capitalise. I thought he was going to come off the top ropes. The two groggy from the earlier punishment he took from Doug Williams. Now Williams looks like he's got him caught. Attempting the superplex. Storm certainly didn't want to suffer that. Storm now on the top rope. Williams just behind him. And if he hits this, then we are in trouble. And my goodness me! Alex Kane suplexing Doug Williams and Johnny Storm off the ropes. And that is one of the most impressive things I've seen in professional wrestling in my life. Good grief. Alex Shane just suplexed both challengers off the turnbuckles. Storm clearly had the furthest to fall, but that move took a lot out of all three men. And that move would have turned the tide around this contest, indeed. Shane now the first back up to his knees. Picks up the show, picks up Johnny Storm, goes for his trademark finishing move, the one night stand. Storm saw that coming. Storm has got to avoid these moves. Here we go. Cover one, two. Oh my goodness, I thought it was all over. That should have been it. Somehow Storm finding it within him to pick out. Doug Williams now on top of the show stealer. Trying the same trip on Alex Shane. Again, just the two count. And Doug Williams wondering what it'll take to keep either man down here in this contest. This has really been a back and forth matchup. And I wouldn't be surprised whichever man won. Storm now on top of the cover over Williams. Just for two count. And this is a great contest. This is a great contest. Will Alex Shane retain? Will we have a new FWA British Heavyweight Champion? Fans appear to be getting behind the Wonder Kid. They would love to see Johnny Storm, the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. Storm would be going for his Wonderworld move. That was the move that beat Alex Shane earlier at New Frontiers. Nonetheless, one, two. That pinned Alex Shane. We thought we had a new champion. That was months ago at New Frontiers. We're here now at Crunch 2005. Storm's got a second shot at the gold. Williams now with a big knee. Bomb scare knee drop. Here Looks to be coming now. As Williams coming off the top rope. Johnny Storm one step behind. And we'll see the cover. And that's it. We've got a new FWA champion. Were it not for the show stealer, Alex Shane. This match has taken so much out of all three competitors. We've seen what a worthy champion Alex Shane is. We've seen what great challengers, what great contenders Johnny Storm and Doug Williams are. So I would say no matter who wins, either of these two men should both automatically become number one contenders after this contest. And now Johnny Storm finds himself in a very compromising position atop Alex Shane's shoulders. Williams is on the top turnbuckle. Oh my goodness me. My goodness me, that has got to be all. Surely whoever Alex Shane chooses to cover now, it's his for the pickings. All three men have given their all, and it shows what a healthy state the FWA main event scene is in. Any three, any one of these three men would be creditable, reputable FWA champions. The crowd certainly appear to have adopted Johnny Storm as their favourite, I'm sure they'd be delighted if the Anarchist retained the belt. And indeed, Alex Shane has certainly proven himself to be a fighting champion, that has got to be it. The hook of the leg, one, two, and somehow, Doug Williams picks out again. And that's got to be all now, we see it finally, Johnny Storm hits his move, one, two, and again, the show stealer kicking out. So much on the line. So much at stake. 
And that's it, the Chaos Theory, the bridging combination, two, three! And I thought we had a new FWA British Heavyweight Champion. We have seen the Wonder Wolf from Johnny Storm. We have seen the Chaos Theory from the Anakin Doug Williams. We have seen the One Night Stand from Alex Shane. Men have kicked out of each move. The big knee there from Doug Williams. And now I don't know what is coming next. Williams going to the top rope. Johnny Storm comes off the rope. Launches Williams inadvertently. Storm doesn't land well. Storm rolls the outside. Williams gets caught with the boot. Shane with another one, two. And Doug Williams kicks out again. Shane is livid. Shane now picking up Williams. Here he goes. One man stand. One, two. in the corner. And what a great context here in the Pro 2005. We saw each man hit their finishing manoeuvre. Each man kicked out of someone else's finishing manoeuvre. In the end, it just came down to Alex Shane, the Anakin Stone Williams score. was on the outside. Shane hit his one night stand for the second time. Doug Williams is covered. One, two, three. There is no need to do. No way to go. Storm unable to break the pin. Shane regains the title. The story here is what a great matchup that was. And I would say the Anakin's has got to be next in line for a shot. And Johnny Storm not far behind him. Well, congratulations to the short steel Alex Shane for retaining the championship out there. Doug Williams not best pleased on what happened. Johnny Storm explaining why he was unable to break up the cover from his Well, of course, Doug Williams got crotched on the top turn bundle inadvertently by Storm. Clearly, it was an accident from our vantage point. I'm not sure that Doug Williams feels the same way. Two men now swearing off. Storm trying to explain. It was an accident. He didn't mean to post him on the ring post. Didn't mean to crotch him. And finally, thank goodness, the two men shake hands. They might not be the best of friends, but they're certainly, certainly on the same page a lot. And it would be a shame to see these two men fall out, particularly after such a, such a hard-hitting contest where both men proved each other to be... Uh, very much not the best in the FWA. And the fans very solidly indeed behind their favourite here for this contest, the Wonder Kid, Johnny Storm. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for tonight's main event. Introducing first. Well, did you see the colour drain from Greg the Truth Lambert's face in a hurry there? From Stafford, Mark, five star, Belton. Here we go, we saw Mark Belton earlier in the evening accompanying James Titor inside this tap out challenge. Of course, he didn't have a manager's license, so he wasn't welcome to stay at ringside for the matchup. Nonetheless, he certainly does have a wrestler's license. And tonight, he's going to be putting that to good use as he takes on the returning Phoenix, Jody Flight. And I, for one, cannot wait to see the Phoenix back in action. After an absence of almost two full years in professional wrestling. And his opponent. Oh, and you can feel it. The 
Attention here is Powerful. Crowd now working themselves up to fever pitch. And when he walks through those curtains, you just know. Oh yeah, the roof is just blowing off the place. And Jody Flight, it is good to have you back. And it looks like Flight wants to take time out to make sure that he gets to greet every last man here at the Bronx Born Civic Room tonight at Brunson 2005. And I don't think anybody would deny him that pleasure. And out of the ring injury forced him to, to disappear from wrestling for almost two years. Before his career was over, he had officially retired. He returned to the FWA as a special guest in British Uprising 3. Oh my goodness, Belton there attacking from behind. This matchup didn't even officially get underway. Nonetheless, Linsky's called for the bell. And Belton and... Jody Fleisch fighting on the outside. <laughs> Belton showing a vicious streak here. We don't always see it in him. We certainly know it's there, though. Fleisch takes nothing but steel as he's thrown into the ring post and bounces off into the steel guardrails. Nonetheless, as I've said, Jody Fleisch returns to the FWA as a special guest. He had no intention of getting physically involved at British Uprising 3. Johnny Storm there wrestled... Uh... Well, this match is just going all over the Broxbourne and Civic Hall. In fact, it's yet to even enter the ring officially. Big kick there, showing the athleticism that Jody Flash brought to the table. Caught himself coming off the steel guardrail. And these high-risk manoeuvres, if they pay off, they bring about big dividends. But if they go wrong, they cause you nothing but trouble. As I said, it was at British Uprising 3, Jody Flash able to help out his friend Johnny Storm, who was attacked by none other than Mark Belton and James Ty. Similar story last month, New Frontiers, earlier in the year. Belton and Ty once again beating up Johnny Storm, it was a two-on-one situation. And Jody Flash returned again to the FWA, helped out his friend Johnny Storm, and then announced he would make his return to the FWA in one-on-one -on -one singles wrestling action. Right here at Crunch 2005 tonight, James Ty was already booked up with his tap-out challenge against Aviv Mayan. So that left Flight to take on Mark Five Star Belton. And this has proven to be a great main event. Belton showing no shortage of confidence. And Jody Fleisch, despite being the absolute huge crowd favourite, must be showing some ring rust. You cannot take a two-year absence from wrestling and walk back into that ring as though nothing had happened. I don't care how skilled and how talented you are. And believe you me, Jody Fleisch is one of the very best. He is going to have to be a half a step off at least. Mark Belton taking every advantage of that that he can. Flight unable to get back into that ring. And just think what a big win this would be for Mark Belton here tonight at Crunch. Beating the Phoenix, Jody Flight. Jody Flight, nonetheless, anxious to impress on his return to the FWA. And you can bet he's going to pull out everything. Well, there you go.
go. Belton said it himself. Jody flies too slow. Flies renowned for his speed. Well, as I said, it just seems to be a half a step off. Showing a few signs of ring rust, and this is very unfortunate for Jody Fleisch. Belton now whipping him off the ropes. Catches him with a kick to the uh, kick to the chest. And Belton is cock a hoop. Belton again tossing Fleisch to the outside. Fleisch though, unaware, has lands on the apron. Comes off the top rope and knocks Belton to the outside. And finally, it looks like we are seeing the Phoenix of old. Coming off the top rope again. And that is more like it. That is the kind of action that fans expect from the Phoenix Jody Fleisch. That kind of high risk, high flying strategy that you just don't see from anyone else. Often imitated, never duplicated. He is one of the original high flyers in this country. A man who has given everything. He gives everything that he has to the fans. Another kick to the side of the skull. Bolton holding himself up on the guardrails. Oh my goodness! Jody Fly's just jumping over the ringside table, under the guardrails, and catching Mark Bolton with a flying head scissors. Bolton landing hard by those chairs. And this matchup is really in no man's land right now. These fans need to scatter and disperse as quickly as they can because believe me, Belton and Fleisch will fight through them if they have to. Belton with the upper hand. We've surely Fleisch into the brick. Oh, Fleisch comes up with a standing mill unit! Jody Fleisch almost like a real life superhero. You would think he had suction boots or something. It ran up the wall and transformed it into a moonsault of sorts. That is just, simply put, one of the most impressive things I've seen in my life. And it is great to see Jody Fleisch back in action here at the Brock's One Civic Hall. And that standing moon unit, that high risk move, really seems to have turned the tide of this contest around. And Belton now backing off on the corner. The Splice rallying the fans around him here at this main event here tonight at Crunch 2005. And what a show we have had this evening. Alex Shane retained his belt in a three-way against two of the top contenders to the belt. We saw Leroy Kincaid come out of nowhere to beat the All-England champion in a non-title bout. We've seen the emergence of sticks and stones as new number one contenders for tag team championships. And we have seen James Ty lose his own tap out challenge. And he will be appearing at Vendetta in July 2005, which will be available soon on DVD, dressed as a clown. Nonetheless, she's not over. And Jody Fleisch comes off the top rope and lands face first very hard indeed. Indeed, Crunch is often a memorable card here in the FWA. And it was at Crunch two years ago that we saw Johnny Storm turn his back on the fans. And indeed, his back on his best friend at the time, Jody Fleisch. The two very nearly came to blows. And we thought that the match would be uh, very soon coming. It seemed to be building. It seemed to be building towards a Fleisch Storm confrontation. Then, as we said, that out of ring injury kept. Jody Fleisch away from the ring for nearly two years. When Fleisch returned to Uprising, we were not sure whose side he would be on. But it seems that all friendships die hard. And Fleisch returning at New Frontiers to help out his friend Johnny Storm. They put their past behind them. And it seems that once again Johnny Storm and Jody Fleisch are on the same page. And at the moment they seem to have their hands full with the team of Mark Belton and James Ty. Jody Fleisch there kicking out at the two count there. But Belton very much the dominant force in this contest. 
And this will be a huge upset win in my eyes. Royal Belton to score the victory. Wrenching back the arms. And that could easily pull the shoulders out of the socket. Could very easily dislocate both arms there. And it's just such a devastating move. Because you are so vulnerable, there is nothing you can do. Fans are now really getting behind Royal Belton. Really getting on his back. Flash comes off the top rope. Belton's still coming. Big cross line there from Belton. And that turned Jody Flash inside out. Fans getting on the back of Belton, but Belton doesn't seem too perturbed by it. They might just be causing the distraction that it will allow Jody Fleisch to uh, get back into this contest. On the other hand, Jody Fleisch chasing nothing but ring rope. And Mark Fleischstar Belt has just grown in confidence as this match has progressed. Not that he was short of it to begin with. Linsky just trying to get this contest out of the ropes. Need to give Jody Fleisch a chance to get back on his feet. Fleisch has taken so much punishment in this contest, I just don't know if it'll be possible. Belton now has him in the corner. Fleisch starting to fight back. Three chops of his own, but a right to the eye from Belton, and Belton is back in charge. Belton now with a scoop slam. Going up to the middle rope. Allowing Jody Flies back to his feet. So he can hit him with a big elbow to the head. And now it's that confidence. Possibly misplaced. Well, there it is. There it is. That's it. Confidence is fine. Confidence is a necessary tool to be a top wrestler. You need to be confident in your own abilities. You need to have the confidence to go out there and give it your all and do your best. But it's when that confidence transforms into arrogance that you have a problem. And Belton now exuding arrogance. And that cost him the match. He had Fleisch possibly won, possibly beaten down. But he spent too much time, and even now he is spending too much time on the outside. Posturing to the fans, talking nonsense to them, and that cover was appalling, quite frankly. You are not going to win a match against somebody the caliber of the Phoenix, covering him with one foot. <laughs> frankly, if I was referee Steve Linsky, I'd be attempted to disqualify him for mocking wrestling. Belton, though, coming off the top rope. And Fleisch able to get out of the way just in time before tasting that leg roll. Belton now clenching that right buttock. And that could easily, easily have lost feeling in his legs there from that move. And of course, if he can't stand up, then he can't wrestle very easily. And look at that, Belton is having trouble putting any weight on his right leg at all. Phoenix now back up to his feet. Catching Mark Belton. Oh, a chop there from Belton and that rang around the venue. The two men now exchanging blows. Skin coming off the other's chest. And Belton's chest is red raw. And the Phoenix doesn't look too good either. The Phoenix now really starting to make a comeback. Comes off the middle rope, and there's that ring rust. Slips off the middle rope. Nonetheless, got the cover. Two. Two. But the Phoenix surely flies despite giving it his all. Despite wrestling so hard, despite pulling some great moves. Just showing a little bit of ring rust. He has been half a step off all night. Slipped off the rope. Gave Belt all he needed to recover. Now Belt with a cover. One, two. Fleisch kicks out. Both men down again. Fleisch going for the cover. Hooks the leg. Should be all one. But a two count there and Mark Belton kicking out. 
Nonetheless, Jody Fleisch certainly not disgracing himself here in the main event of Crunch 2005 as he whips Belton into the ropes but gets caught with a big boot to the face. Belton now positioning Fleisch on the top turnbuckle. Be interesting to see what he's got in mind. Looks like he's going for a superplex off the middle ropes. And if he can hit it, this matchup may well be over. Fleisch though reverses it, dropping Belton head first. And now Fleisch going to the opposite corner. And it looks like he is signaling. Here it is, the 720 DDT, and that should be all. Goes for the cover, one, the referee for two, and what the, James Ty there, oh my goodness. Oh no, well here comes Johnny Storm saving, saving Jody Fleisch from James Ty, but James Ty out of nowhere, breaking up the pinball, Jody Fleisch had the match up, one, he hit the 720 DDT, Felt would have been out for the count, Linsky distracted there, and now who's this? Who on earth is this? It's a masked man. And he is attacking Johnny Floyd with a pile driver. Referee Steve Linsky getting rid of Johnny Storm and Johnny and, uh, and James Ty. One, two, three. Well, Mark Belton there scoring the win after a masked assailant the winner of the match, Mark gave a pile Michael driver Milton. to Johnny Floyd. And of course, pile drivers are illegal within the NWA for good reason, and that being that they are very dangerous indeed. And who is this bro? It looks like we might find out. Well, Storm getting his friend Jody Fleisch out of the ring. Oh no! Oh no! Please no! Anyone but it's, it's Doug Williams. Anyone but him. Why, Doug? Please. Give me one good reason. Not like this, though. And Johnny Storm can't believe it. And quite frankly, neither can I. Well, the fans showing their displeasure. And look at that. Belton could care less. He's got the win. Doesn't quite understand it. While well, Bowman, Williams and uh, Ty there shaking hands. No one among thieves, but uh, what an unholy alliance those two make. And what a terrible way for Jody Fleisch's return match to end. Jody Fleisch had uh, Jody Fleisch appeared to have Mark Belton beaten. Bust out that 720 DVT. No one kicks out of that. Look at you! Look at you! That's a chance to call me over. When was the last time you went to a gym? Oh, come on, Mark Belton. You can't believe that. Look at you! Okay, Belton, you've won the match. Let's get out of here. Come on. I just want to know why Doug Williams is turning his back on us. Why, Doug? Why, Doug? Why like this? <laughs> well, there we go. Linsky officially recognising Mark Belton as the winner of the contest. Oh, and look at Mark Belton. Looks like he's just won the FA Cup final single-handedly. That could not be further from the truth. What a shame for the Phoenix. Well, I'm disgusted. Jody Fleisch, it's great to see you back. But Doug Williams, I am disgusted. You should be fine and you should be suspended. That's it, sold out. And thank you, Jody Fleisch and Jody Storm, finally clearing the ring. Now yeah, you fucking run now, Billy. And they are nothing more than human 
human effluent in my opinion. Get out of here, James Hyde. Doug Williams, you are a champion in anybody's but Why do you want to align yourself with this man, James Hyde, and this man, Mark Belton? You are so much better than that. Why throw it all away? Well, fans, we hope you've enjoyed Crunch 2005. We'll see you at Vendetta. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special exclusive DVD extra matchup. That's right, Crunch 2005, the dark match, a special bonus matchup for our fans, our gold ring side ticket holders, silver ring side ticket holders, and you, our special friends of the Frontier Wrestling Alliance. This is a very special dark match. It comes just one month after the first ever FWA Open Invitation. And one man who made a name for himself, if not necessarily for the right reasons, at the Open Invitation, this man here, Tony Superstar Sefton. Well, he certainly believes that. Tony Superstar Sefton, feeling that the Open Invitation was beneath him and walked out. And here comes his opponent, a man who was successfully chosen by you, the NWA faithful, to face Max Voltage. That's right. Here he is, Jack Storm. Jack Storm, who has been making a, a bit of a name to himself around the country as of late. And is that... That looks like the XPW European title, or at least the briefcase that Storm's namesake, no relative I believe, uh, carried around for the last year and goodness knows that one. I'm guessing Jack Storm must be the, uh, the black sheep of the Storm family, and Tony Superstar Sefton looks none plus. Even referee Steve Linsky has a, a small smile on his eyes, and the bell rings! And we're going to kick things off here with the dark match at the Broxbourne Civic Hall FWA Crunch 2005. Well, despite his arrogant attitude, Tony Superstar Sefton certainly seems to have his fair share of fans amongst the gold and silver ringside ticket holders. Fans certainly bemused by the appearance of the XPW European Championship. I would imagine uh, 
I don't think that belt's on the line. In fact, Storm doesn't even uh, hold... I'm pretty sure the belt was dissolved, let's be honest. Two men lock up. And this dark match is a real big opportunity for both men to shine in the FWA. Storm obviously already had his chance last month when he took on Max Voltage. And indeed, I know Tony Superstar Seflin has been knocking on the doors of FWA management and matchmakers for many months now. And uh, having been given this opportunity, desperate to make a name for himself and give uh, as good a performance as he possibly can. Oh my goodness, a clean break from uh, Sefton, but nonetheless an arrogant slap to the face of Storm. Storm doesn't look too pleased. Well, I think the look on Storm's face says, if that's how you want to play it, I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you every step of the way. Two look up. Oh, thought we were going to get a clean break. Storm able to reverse it. Storm tries the same trick. Tony Sefton falls for his own trick. Oh, what a nice trip up there. Tony Sefton gets slammed to the mat. And Jack Storm is taking control in short order of this contest. Whips him off the ropes. And Tony Sefton in some trouble in the early goings of this dark match. Jack Storm gets reversed. The two catch each other. Both have the same idea. Whip to the buttocks and he's over. Sefton is down. Jack Storm now rallying to get the, uh, the Roxbourne faithful behind him. Yeah. Sefton in the corner. Takes a big forearm. Yeah. We've got a headlock. What are we going to... Oh. Something awfully familiar about that. Sefton certainly saw it coming. And it looks like Johnny Storm is uh, somewhat of a big influence on this contest. I'm guessing Jack Storm must have been watching a couple of old tapes this evening. Sefton now wrenching the uh, the head and neck area. Certainly not a chokehold, but it's not going to make breathing any easier. Now pulling back the arms. Storm not going to submit. It's too big an opportunity for him, but he really needs to get out of this hole before the damage is done. Sefton really cinching it in there. Jack Storm doing everything he can. Sefton realising he's not going to get a submission from that. I'm pretty sure that was a closed fist though, which as you know is illegal. Well, the t-shirt comes off and Tony Superstar Sefton means business. Elbow to the back of Storm's head. And now Storm getting choked out on the middle rope. Very athletic individual, Tony Superstar Sefton. Very impressive. The man has all the tools to go a long way in this business. Really, the only thing he lacks is big match experience. Referee keeping an eye on both men here. Sefton brings Storm back down to the mat. Very cocky, very cocky. Confidence is no bad thing. But you really want to look out for yourself because in wrestling, as in life, pride comes before a fall. Cover one, two. Well, it's going to take more than that to put Jack Storm away. And Tony Sefton really impressing in this contest here. After walking out on the open invitation last month, Had to question his attitude. Oh my goodness, what a great hold that is. Storm looks to be in tremendous pain. Is he tapping? I think he... No, he didn't tap out. The referee in a great position there. Storm, very keen to break that hold. Rolls into the ropes to keep Sefton away from him. Sefton really showing wisdom beyond his years in this matchup. Storm now struggling to fight back. Reversal. Storm's in the ropes now. Catches Tony Superstar Sefton who lands on his feet. Sefton blocks the chop and I think he may have got a fistful of ice there. Yeah. 
Well, Sefton trained by the famous Tony Scarlo. And it's really showing. Sefton seems to know every trick in the book. And Jack Storm showed so much potential against Max Voltage here at Broxbourne last month. Not getting much of a look in here on this occasion in the dark match at Crunch 2005. Here's the cover just a two count on this occasion as the matchup continues, but Sefton can't believe it. Indeed, Sefton displaying uh, an attitude that isn't endearing himself too much to the. Uh, to some of the more concerning fans of the FWA. Again, a nice backflip from Sefton. Not quite sure what it accomplished. Very powerful clothesline there, taking Storm out of his boots. Storm on the ground, and here we go, the finishing maneuver from Tony Sefton. It's got to be all over. Goes for the cover. One, two. Oh my goodness. Jack Storm somehow kicks out of that. My goodness gracious me. Well, if Jack Storm can kick out of that, doesn't bode well for superstar Tony Sefton. Storm now ducking two blows and catches Sefton off guard. Both men down now. Storm's taking an awful lot of punishment. As you can see there, he's clutching the back of his neck, which has just faced a continual barrage of assault from Sefton. Sefton down. The referee making the 10 count, already up to 7, Storm now back up to his feet using the ropes to help himself stand up, both men slugging it out toe to toe, banging the centre of the ring, this match has taken so much out of both men, Storm though with a flurry of offence, now catching Storm with a big clothesline, nice drop kick there from Jack Storm, picks up the superstar, Whips him off the ropes. Oh, and Tony Superstar Sefton looks like he landed pretty badly there on his knee. And I think Storm can smell that. Drops him on his head. And that has got to be it. He's going for the cover now. The referee's in a great position. But Storm thinking twice. The matchup, the matchup is over. If Storm had wanted to, he could have covered Sefton for six or seven there. But instead, reaches for the XPW suitcase, and finally, I think we're going to find out what's inside it. Storm, I don't know if he's stolen that from Johnny Storm or what, doesn't seem to know the combination. He's asking the referee to help out. But really, this is very inopp inopportune. Uh, oh, Tony Sefton catching Storm there with a very unique roll up. Gets a yellow card for it, and Linsky refusing to uh, count the full there. With a yellow, card. yellow card there for the testicular based offence of Tony Superstar Sefton. A yellow card for a low blow. Ooh. Yeah. Referee distracted there with the yellow card. Sefton uses the suitcase and that's it. One, two, three. And Jack Storm losing the dark match here. Tony in Crunch 2005. Sefton. Strong time for both men, but Tony Superstar Sefton had what it took. And on this night, he was the victor here at FWA Front 2005. Your man there, Jack Storm, could have had the match won. But he decided to uh, pick up that XPW suitcase of, uh, of his namesake, Johnny Storm. Seems to be distracted, almost possessed by it. That cost him the victory. And it's a big win here for Tony Superstar Sefton. And make no mistake about it, we'll be seeing much more of this young man in the weeks and months to come here in the Frontier Wrestling Alliance.
Fans, that was the special bonus match. We're going to open our doors up now for the rest of the ticket holders. Don't go anywhere. We will be back very shortly with FWA Crunch 2005. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, the FWA management team would like to issue a statement. To that end, please welcome Acting Managing Director of the FWA, Elizar Cabrera, and his new Executive Assistant, Ms. Jane Childs. Here comes Elizar Cabrera and Jane Childs, who finds herself in a position of authority. I would be interested to know how she grows so quickly up the ranks. Thank you, John. As you may be aware, the tag team titles haven't been defended for several months. So I'd like to now call out the tag team champions, Hamilton Court, the Duke of Danger and Simmons. Well, indeed, the FWA Tag Team Champions, Hampton Court, winning the belts almost a year ago, but due to uh, an unfortunate illness on Simmons' part, they have not been defended in recent months, and Elizabeth Cabrera has come out here now to get to the bottom of the situation. But as you can see, Simmons still not here. You are caught here, but I think you know why. It's been five months since you defended the belts, and the FWA management have discussed this long and hard, and we've come to a decision. What my boss, Mr. Cabrera, is trying to say is that we have decided to strip you of the title. No, no, that is not what we decided. Hampton Court won't be stripped of the titles if you sign this contract to defend those belts at the next available FWA show. Duke of Danger examining the legal papers. But whose music is this? Well, it's the twisted genius Dean Ayers. We haven't seen Dean Ayers since the departure of Virgil from the FWA. But who's this he has with him? It is, of course, his new protégés, the tag team of Sticks and Martin Stone. They made their FWA debut with an impressive demolition of the Manchester Massive at New Frontiers. And you can bet your bottom dollar that AS has got more than one eye on the FWA Tag Team Championship. This situation is ludicrous. The rules state that the belt should be defended once every three main shows. And now we've had Gold Rush, New Frontiers, and now here we are at Crunch, and the belts still aren't being defended. In my book, that means that Hampton Court should be stripped of the belts. And for you to stand here and say that they're not because of extenuating circumstances makes a mockery of the rules and makes a mockery of you as the managing director. Now my solicitors, Baker, Brink and Dickcock, tell me we are being discriminated against because we aren't as popular with these people as Hampton Court. And the only reason you're making this decision is to try and be the fan-friendly director. We are the aggrieved party. Where is our access to these medical reports? Because I'm sorry, I don't believe for a second that there's anything wrong with Simmons. Last time I was managing Birch and I was trying to face you, you had some dodgy broken arm that postponed the match for months and months and months. Well, I'm sorry, 
Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm not fooling for this one again. I'm going to give you a choice myself right now. You can do the honourable thing and forfeit the belts right now to the champions in waiting. Or you can sign that contract. But mark my words, if you sign that contract to face us, we can make your life very miserable indeed. Oh, hang on a second. Martin Stone there attacking the Duke of Danger unaware now. And Sticks and Stone are administering a severe this is just a taste of what will come to you. So you've got to make a choice right now. But here comes Simmons the butler. Simmons making a cry out and return to the NWA to help out his tag team partner and fellow champion, the Duke of Danger. Simmons now with a microphone, what's he got to say I to the fans? I've been stood back there for the last five minutes and I'm sick to death of hearing your big mouth give it large, pal. I want everyone here, first of all, FWA, I miss you all, you're brilliant guys, thank you. Well, we've missed you too, Simmons. It's great to have you back here in the FWA. Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome Do you want to hear some good news? Yeah. Okay, well, the good news is I'm 100% back to health. Yeah. And listen here. Listen here, fat boy. I'm not sure which one of the three they're referring to, Bale. Any time, any place, you three want to face Simmons and the Duke of Danger for the FWA Tag Team Championship. You've got it, boys. Any time, Markham, Cleacock or Brock's Bond, do you want to see it? Simmons there making it absolutely clear. Now, Diaz, Sticks, and Martin, I'm going to give you to the count of ten to give your three fat monkey asses back there, and we're going to have this fight right now. One, two, three. Looks like when push comes to shove. 99 and 999 James Charles not impressed at all. Thank you, FWS. Good to be back. Charles, of course, all in favour of stripping the champions. Elazar Cabrera put in a very difficult position, but it appears that Simmons is in very oh, yeah. good luck indeed. And he was more than happy to defend the belt. Dean Ayers, one of them handed it to him on a plate, it seemed like. When push comes to shove, and sticks and stones would have had to fight for the belt, they went scarfing back to the uh, dressing room. Joey Dexter, too. So, we're going to see you in a 
Disgust me. <laughs> the last match of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now by Johnny Storm taking down Castano. And now, what could Johnny be going for? Leaping straight to the top rope. Dazzling from up here. A huge spinning heel kick. Possibly second only to Jody Flash in the FWA. Of Johnny Storm's high flying abilities. Whenever he goes up to those top ropes, to that middle rope, you know something spectacular is going to occur. My goodness, a fall away T-bone suplex there from George Castano, who was never short of some kind of throw to injure his opponents with. And John Storm back looks to be in great pain. It's Castano pumps under the ring. What could that be? A dustbin of some sort, I believe. Yeah, he's rubbish, still in it, thrown back into the ring. This match, as I said before, will be no technical masterpiece. It could be nothing short of a brawl as Castano just disdainfully spits in Johnny Storm's face. And now what does the Colombian George Castano have in mind? Setting the Wonder Kid up for something. Oh my goodness! A hard shot there, right to the back of the Wonder Kid's skull. I believe it was with a video cassette of some sort. Johnny Storm may well have just been knocked out from that one singular blow. Taking another swig of that water bottle and another spit right in the Wonder Kid's face. This is really poor sportsmanship and really poor behaviour from the Colombian. Who's holding that trash can with evil intentions. No, Johnny Storm reverses it and dumps it right on his head. Following it up with a hard slap, sending him into the corner. Johnny Storm has covered George Castano in rubbish. And now, what's his aim? Picking him up for a nice body slam. No! A sit out, Mission Oku driver dropping the Colombian straight on his head. I'm not sure if George will be able to get back up after suffering a move of that impact. And now, what does Storm have? Some kind of wooden board, some kind of chip board it looks like. Go on, what's more to the top rope? Oh my goodness, he just shattered that chip board right over George Cristano's head. And now, Johnny Storm is really in the lead in this matchup. Going back under the ring apron once more, under those skirts, looking for some other item of destruction to injure the Colombian with. He really need not. It looks like George Cristano is not going to be. Oh my goodness, what does he have there? It's some form of step ladder. Going into the ring, Cristano really looks to be injured there. He doesn't look as if he's going to be getting up. Storm, however, not hitting him with it, I believe. No, setting him up with it. Smash right into his forehead. Castano must be near to unconsciousness with all the injuries he has suffered here. Kick to the gut there. One, right to the chin. What does Johnny Storm have in mind? Obviously something innovative and high-flying. That's just his way. And now you, me and the fans are going to see what? A huge flying clothesline cross-body manoeuvre right into the head and upper body of George Castano. And now just casually tossing it right onto that back of George Castano. Johnny Storm was really having his way with the Colombian here, having a bit of fun and really defeating his opponent in the process. But perhaps he got just that bit too cocky and George Castano's back in it, but no. A huge sky-high manoeuvre 
dropping him right on his back once more. The back probably getting rubber damage there. Castano being sent in, hitting the turn back of Sternum first. What's he going for? Could it be the super rewind Frankensteiner? Yes! Taking George Castano right down the Frankensteiner. Johnny Storm looks to be slightly fatigued there. I'm not sure if he got quite 100% of that manoeuvre. It's time, says Johnny Storm. He's obviously got something else in mind. Could he be going for the flag? Is he aiming to get the match over with? No. The turnbuckle he is currently standing on has no flag. So he's aiming for one more of his amazing high flying manoeuvres. And it's a full moon tonight here in the FWI Arena. As Johnny Storm just gets the power bomb once more, right onto his head, neck, and shoulders. George Castano obviously has studied Johnny Storm's career. They've travelled up and down the country, fought on the same shows. George Castano knows that Johnny Storm suffered a severe concussion from that very same type of power bomb, and he's aiming to further the damage done then with another power bomb. So far, he's hit two in the match, and if he, hit, and if he hits any more, there is no doubt, in my mind at least, that George Castano can become the victor in this match. Johnny Storm, not sure where he is, doesn't even look to see where his opponent is, just looks for that flag, that Union Jack that he loves so much. And now, George Castano setting up Johnny Storm on that turnbuckle, near the Colombian flag of course, so that if anyone wins, it could not, could not be Johnny. Setting up, what could this be? This could not be the most devastating suplex in the FWA currently. Johnny Storm blocking it, but no! Super German suplex there! In the Colombian, George Castano, the retro cam, showing three different viewpoints of the most devastating suplex in the FWA, and possibly in the world today. Top rope German suplex just turned the Wonder Kid inside out. Even George Castano turned something of a back somersault, using all his body weight and momentum to launch the Wonder Kid right into the air. And this match has dramatically turned around in the favour of the Colombian, George Castano. Possibly going for another one of his suplexes, setting him back up. One more he calls for. My goodness, I'm not sure that jo not even Johnny Storm, the Wonder Kid, could survive this. But no, he set it up in the wrong turnbuckle. A low blow there, and could Johnny Storm do it? As long as he re he's reaching for it, the Union Jack, he's grabbed hold of it. Yes, Johnny Storm is the victor. The Union Jack, he's grabbed it. One more time, Johnny Storm has proved that he can beat George Castano any damn way he wants to. He survived the top rope German two blacks. He survived all the punishment the Colombian had to offer. And now he waves that Union Jack around with a great deal of pride. And so he should. Johnny Storm once more proved himself to be one of the most explosive, dazzling, death-defying wrestlers the FWA has to offer. And the match is not over yet. At least the fight is not over. As Johnny Storm just smacks it, just bends that hole right over the head of George Castano and he's now shoving that flag where the sun doesn't shine. Sending George Castano straight to the outside. Johnny Storm is victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching FWA TV. Tune in next week for more hard hitting action. we see the fallen angel Christopher Daniels slowly making his way to ringside accompanied by the twisted genius Dean Ass. Now the reason Christopher Daniels is fighting Doug Williams tonight for the FWA title is the fact that Chris Daniels has beaten Doug Williams on home soil before. The old school saw this as an opportunity that William, Williams had been beaten before by Daniels so they figured if Daniels has done it once Daniels can do it again. Will we see tonight Nick Christopher Daniels walking out the FWA British heavyweight champion? Quite possibly Tony. You know defeating Doug Williams is like winning some of the best championships available in the business today and if there's one man who can repeat it tonight, it's going to be the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels he could very well be the next FWA heavyweight champion Listen to him, Tony. And now he's going to go one on one with the anarchist. The FWA title's on the line.
And here we see the FWA champion making his way to ringside, showing off proudly his title belt. He's not ready to let it go. He's not ready to lay down for the fallen angel. He's going to give it all he's got to try and retain his heavyweight championship. He's a proud man, a proud champion, and he holds a rather reputable title in the FWA heavyweight championship. This is going to be a fantastic contest. Both these men have met before in British soil. Christopher Daniels has a win over Doug Williams, but can Doug Williams get the win over him tonight? FWA titles on the line, Tony. Who do you think's walking out with a belt? You know, Nick, I couldn't say at the moment, but the, the, the factor in this match that I've got to count in is Dean Ayers. We've seen the Twisted Genius interfering matches before. Could he could he make this match swing in the favour of the Fallen Angel? And will we see Christopher Daniels walk out with the title? It all depends on how Doug Williams' mind works in this match. Is he going to keep an eye on Dean Ayers, or is he just going to completely focus on Christopher Daniels? I think it's about time we found out. Well, I have to say, you can't look past the Fallen Angel, but you've got to keep your mind on the Twisted Genius. He's called that for a reason, you know, Tony. He's always got a plan, and his plan will result in Doug Williams losing the title here tonight at Crunch. As we see both men now getting ready to lock up for what could possibly be a modern-day classic. Christopher Daniels not really adhering himself to the fans here tonight, but he's a proud American and he wants to take it home to his land. As we see both men now in with a lockup, Christopher Daniels takes the wrist of Doug Williams. Nice wrist lock there, but I wouldn't want to go technical wrestling with the anarchist. Doug Williams rolls through. He's looking to release the pressure. Possibly, yes, see, there he is. He's able to reverse the hold. Nice wrist lock of his own. To be honest, Nick, if one person could match technical skill with Doug Williams, I would say it was Christopher Daniels. He's an awesome technical wrestler. He can high fly as well. Basically, he can do whatever is needed of him. As Christopher Daniels basically takes Doug's wrist and Doug Williams though back one of his own and Christopher Daniels back in with one of his own. Doug's trying to get through. Oh, look at that, Tony. That was gorgeous. Christopher Daniels kept the wrist lock on at all times and now Doug's, Doug's floating through again. Now he's got the handlock and now he's going for the roll up and here we go. One, two. It's a little bit early, Nick, but as we see there, both men rolling through, keeping hold of the wrist. They've got the same idea at the beginning of this match. Is this going to be the way it's going to continue though? Is it going to be matched move for move or is one of them going to break out and become the definitive victor well we'll see I mean obviously whoever walks out of this is the FWA champion and that is rather definite if you ask me Tony you're right Nick the fans getting on the case of the fallen angel here, but he's got to let the, he's got to keep the fans out of his mind if he's going to focus on Doug Williams. Doug Williams could take you apart if you're not completely psyched properly. That's true, Nick. That's true. Fallen angel George Jackson with some fans now as we go back in once again with the lockup, and Christopher Daniels takes the head of Doug Williams into the headlock. Nice technique there, floating from the headlock and now into the wrist lock, keeping the pressure on Doug, keeping the pressure on the wrist. Doug, ooh, looked like a poke in the eye there, but Doug's too honest to wrestle to do that, floating through, nice fireman judo carry, and there we go, one, no, it's only a one count, off the ropes though, nice, D he's down to the mat, jumps over, Christopher Daniels, leapfrog, off the ropes, Doug with a leapfrog of his own, and now, full range of Christopher Daniels, he's got the arm, he's whipping into the corner, Doug's going out of kiss DDT, no, it wasn't meant to be. It looked like we were going to see the revolution DDT early from Doug Williams, but as you see the look on Christopher Daniels' face, no, 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 he was prepared for it, he's been watching his tapes, he knows what to expect. Yes, the anarchist, I mean, he may look it but he's not so cocky that he's going to ignore the opportunity to study tapes of his challengers and now they've got the lock up who's going to come out on top of this Tony and there's the headlock by the fallen angel the fallen angel there with a the headlock onto Doug Williams it looks like Doug seems to be trying to power out of it as Christopher Daniels takes him over Doug Williams with the leg lock onto Chris Daniels looks like Christopher Daniels managed to take Doug down but Doug's managed to take it to his own he's now got the head scissors on Christopher Daniels let's see where Doug's going to take this it looks like in the opening in the opening minutes of this match Nick they seem to just be trying to work each other down they're not picking on one particular body part they're just all out trying to work it out as Christopher Daniels beautifully rolls out of that move back into the headlock onto Doug Williams beautiful flow through uh, yeah I completely agree with you there Tony Giles um, it seems to me instead of like focusing on a body part like you said it's like they're just trying to figure out their opponent well, they, haven't seen, they haven't wrestled each other for a while yet they just need to know the strengths and weaknesses of their opponents headlock once again on Christopher for Daniels. It's obviously this match hasn't really got going yet. They're still on a feeling out process. Christopher Daniels there took Doug Williams down with his shoulder block and then went straight back into the headlock. Once again down with his shoulder block as he springs off into the ropes. Doug Williams now goes for the snapmare. Christopher Daniels the same idea. 
Oh, now Christopher Daniels taken down Doug Williams and he's got the headlock on Doug. Now they've Doug's managed to fight his way up quite quickly. Let's see if he can get out of the pressure. Oh, step on the back of the knee, flips out, and a headlock of his own. That was awesome, Nick. He used his own weight and momentum to get back into the headlock onto Christopher Daniels. Doug Williams is one of those men, as you can hear, the fans are applauding him. Not many men can make you applaud with a headlock, but the anarchist Doug Williams is certainly one of them. Any move that he does, he makes it count, as Christopher Daniels now is firing back with some elbows to the ribs as he sends Doug Williams off into the ropes. Doug held on, though, kicked in the chest and now he's whipped him to the front. Chris Daniels, exact same thing, single leg takedown. But now Doug Williams is, oh, beautiful float through headlock there. Once again, back into the headlock. It's it's headlock for headlock at the moment, Nick. One gets one, one reverses it, one puts it back. It looks as though Christopher Daniels is going to need to maybe send him off into the ropes and try and work his way out. Look like Christopher Daniels trying to go to the next stage of the match, but Doug just ain't letting him. If Doug's going to get this match going, it's going to be on his terms and his terms only. It's going to take a lot more than a headlock though to down the fallen angel as you see him saying there no no it's going to take a bit more again back in blows with the ribs there nice few firm forearms there to the ribs of the anarchist but it wasn't going to be Doug Williams still holding on to that headlock Chris Daniels tried to launch him but once again Doug is not going to let him get to the next stages of this contest unless it's on his own ground basically, and that is why he is such a solid champion basically Doug Williams putting on the brakes once again Nick he's not prepared to let the head go yet everything is going to be on his turns, he's the champion and he plans to stay that way. Doug Williams' technique is so solid, he could probably make you submit with a headlock, but I don't think it's going to happen here today. Christopher Daniels just a little bit too proud for that, I think. Well, to be honest, Nick, the old school wouldn't have hired Christopher Daniels unless they thought he could get the job done. One, two! Doug no, Williams went over there with a float over, but only managed to get a two count. Doug was there to meet him with a forearm and a European uppercut, and now he's got the fallen angel in the corner, sending him off the ropes, and there, oh, beautiful elbow in the chest plate there of the Oh wait, one, two, kick out. Not just yet, it was an awesome back elbow, may have put some people away, but as I was saying before, the twisted genius Dean Ayas has brought over the man that he thinks can get the job done. So far it seems to be all Doug Williams, but as you know, the tide can turn in a matter of seconds, as it almost just did, but Doug Williams back once in control. Well, Doug there leapfrogged over the fallen angel, now, oh, revolution DDT, but no, Christopher Daniels was able, oh, neck breaker. Awesome neck breaker, Christopher Daniels once again had the revolution DDT scout turned it into an atomic drop and then sunk in an awesome neck breaker. Doug Williams now down, clutching the back of his head. Is, the, is this the body part that maybe the fallen angel is going to start working on, Nick? Well, it's called a neck breaker for a reason and the neck of Doug Williams was snapped back quite viciously there. And now the fallen angel rather ungraciously kicking the champion of our proud, proud company. Well, when you've got a wrestler on the mat, Nick, all I can think of to do, them, the simplest thing to do is to put the boots in as Christopher Daniels now is applying a neck submission move on Doug Williams. Modified chokehold there, beautiful technique there. He's blocking off the arteries on the side of the neck. He's slowing down Doug. As Chris Vangels is saying to the referee, ask him. I think it's going to take a bit more. Nice snap man take over there as once again he's got him into a headlock. He's trying to, looks like he's trying to rip the jaw off Doug Williams there. That's rather hideous. If you ask me, Tony. Oh, that's just not pretty. Doug Williams must be in a hell of a lot of pain, but it's going to take a lot more to make him quit. Well, Doug, um, seems like Christopher Daniels making friends with fans at ringside. Nice knee across the chest of Anarchist. And there he goes to cover. One, two, kick out by the Anarchist, Doug Williams. A kick out there by Williams. It seems as though Daniels is targeting the head and chest area of Doug Williams. I can't think why. He's got an illegal choke there. Come on, referee. Has to break the hold. I mean, this is the, this is the type of thing we don't want to see in this match, Nick. We want to see a clean-cut wrestling match with a clear, undecided... Do you honestly expect Christopher Daniels to go with a clean cut? I don't think so, Tony. Well, you never know. You know, pigs might fly as the fallen angel now is still working on Doug the Anarchist Williams. Oh, awesome. Oh, he had him basically... Christopher Daniels, the fallen angel, is in control of this contest at the moment. Yes, you are very well the man who could be walking out of here as the heavyweight champion, but first you've got to get through the British lad that is Dougie. He might be the man at the moment, but Doug Williams can pull it out of the bag at any time. An awesome suplex there, he floats over into the pin. Nice technique there, managed to literally pump over the anarchist, but Christopher Daniels looking rather frustrated, but to be honest, you shouldn't be surprised. Suplex not the type of 
move that will get the pollinating, oh sorry, the anarchist done. A nice elbow to the back of the head there, once again working over the head and neck area of Doug Williams. He's got to break the hold again. Christopher Daniels is starting to use a little bit of dirty tactics. Maybe he's a little bit frustrated, Nick, that he hasn't been able to put the anarchist away just yet. Well, it doesn't surprise me, and a lot of Americans will look at Doug and think he's just a normal British guy. But what's Dean AS doing? I think I'll just poke him in the eye there, maybe, Tony. It appears the wild card in the match is Dean AS outside the ring. It's the minute the referee's back's turned, he's going to do something as... Oh, Christopher Daniels sent Doug Williams into the corner. This Doug Williams managed to reverse it. Are we going to see Doug Williams now on with the offence? Oh, there he goes. Whips him to the rope, and he's gone over him and wait now. Oh, lovely high knee there by the anarchist, and he's keeping the pressure on. Looks like setting up for a suplex. Could it be Tony? Oh, nice. Oh, oh awesome. Like brain, brain buster. buster. Yeah, very nice. This could be it. But again, it's going to take a little bit more, both of these men. They, they want the title, Nick. They really they want to take this title home. Christopher Daniels wants to take it back to America. Doug Williams wants to take it back home to Maidstone. Well, I was saying earlier, a lot of the Americans look at Doug like he's just a British wrestler. What they don't seem to realise is British wrestlers know how to wrestle. Indeed, Nick. As Doug Williams now sends Christopher Daniels off, Christopher Daniels up with a boot. Modified sort of reverse DDT neck breaker variation there. Gorgeous. If Christopher Daniels can now just keep the pressure on, he could very well be walking out of the Bronxbourne City Hall title. Two. Th not yet, Tony. Not just yet, but I figured out why he's targeting the head and neck area. If you think of Christopher Daniels' finisher, the last rights, it's a devastating neck breaker. Are yes, we going to see that? Is this going to be the end? Is this going to be the end for Doug Williams? This is why I think he's targeting the area. An awesome back suplex there. Yeah, Doug Williams found him like an accordion there. And oh, look at this, Tony. He's got him a cross face on the ch champion. He's basically he's Nick. I mean, it, he's trying to break him down bit by bit. He's doing the power moves, he's doing the submission move he'll do anything that will help him get the last rights on Doug Williams for Daniels to walk out, the British heavyweight champion. I can tell you what he's doing here he's using the bones of the wrist and he's digging it into the sides of the head of the anarchist, and the anarchist has managed to get the ropes away from Dean Ayers We saw the twisted genius there pulling the ropes away from Dean Ayers but basic, well Dean Ayers, sorry, pulling the ropes away from Doug Williams, but he couldn't hold on to it Dean Ayers is clutching his neck, he's wearing the neck brace, Dean Ayers suffered the Nikita to cut her earlier on and isn't quite feeling right. It looks like, oh, could this be nice fisherman? One, two, three, no! Oh, not just yet, not just yet. Look at the look on Daniels' face. What do you mean that was only two? It's going to take more than that, Daniels. He couldn't believe it, and quite frankly, neither could I. I thought he might have had the win there, but obviously it was not yet meant to be. And now Christopher Daniels, oh, vicious chop in the corner. Stinging chops to the chest of Doug Williams. And another one. Oh, I would not like to take one of those, Nick. And now Christopher Daniels keeping the pressure on. Beautiful technique there with that shot. Interacting with the fans maybe, but we still don't want you winning the title and taking it away from our homeland. Christopher Daniels now running in. Doug Williams managing to get the boot up. And once again, boot to the side of the head of the fallen angel. And oh, over the top right. The Fallen Angel got crotched. The Fallen Angel there tried to uh, tried to run into Doug Williams. Doug Williams used the last bit of strength he had just to crotch Daniels on the top rope. Both men are down. Doug Williams clutching the back of his head. I'm hoping and praying that Christopher Daniels hasn't seen the weak spot and he's not going to cinch in the last rights because if he does, in my opinion, Nick, it's going to be all over. Well, it could be the last right. It could also be the double underhook face buster, which he calls the angel wings. Both vicious moves, both work on the neck, and Doug is firing back. Three forearms in a row, off the ropes. The fallen angel comes back, pancake to the challenger. Doug Williams seems to have got some momentum back, and he's going to the top oh, rope. Oh, he's got oh, it. Gonna... Bomb scare knee drop. It's your favourite move from Doug Williams. Surely this is it. Two, three. No, not just yet. Not just yet. I thought it was going to be all over there with a bomb screen, bomb scare knee drop. It's going to take a little bit more. Maybe the Revolution DDT, maybe the Chaos Theory. But Doug Williams seems to have his second win, and it could all go in the anarchist's favour from here on. Well, he's now working on the fallen angel, and now. A lovely knee there, and he's setting him up. He's got the suplex set in. Let's see what he's going for. He's setting him up top, Tony. Could be something rather special. It looks like Doug Williams is maybe going for a high-risk manoeuvre from the top rope. He's got him. Oh, 
Bloody hell, Tony. Double underhook, top rope suplex. That's got to take something out of both men. Doug Williams may have hit the back of his head on the way down. He is clutching it, but Christopher Daniels is moving very, very slowly at the minute. Freaking hell, that was a gorgeous suplex from the top, like. I have to say, that's the type of move that makes Doug Williams such a feared competitor. That's the type of move that will change the way a match is going. One minute you think it's all about one wrestler, next minute it's all about the other. Doug Williams doing a move like that has surely put him back on the offense, but Christopher Daniels now. Blue Thunder Driver from Christopher Daniels. This could be Three. it. No, no. Doug Williams just slowly, slowly managing to get the arm up. I swear I thought, that was a free turn. I, I thought, thought it was it a was. three as well, but he managed to get the shoulder up. The Blue Thunder Driver is one of Christopher Daniels' signature moves. He usually puts you away. Maybe he's going to go for something special here. Oh, you're an Archie suplex. Could he have it here? Looks like, oh, he's going for it. He's one signaling. of his trademark. It's the ascension to heaven. It's the floating moon salt done ever so perfectly. Surely this is it. Three, oh! no! Look at the look on Christopher Daniels' face. What have I got to do to get rid of Doug Williams? I am so pleased that Doug was able to kick out. I don't want the title going around the waist of an American. Nothing personal, but Christopher Daniels would be a horrible representative of that championship. A double clothesline sending both men down. Oh my, what is going to happen next, Nick? Gold Rush, there's been this lunatic on the loose attacking people. Nobody back there feels safe. The next victim could be anybody. Could it be you, John Atkins? Could be you, camera boy? Could be you, you slag? And let's face it, terror backstage, Jack Xavier and Mark Sloan, the first two victims, so scared they won't even set foot back in Brock's ball tonight. And Jack Xavier, he's so terrified, I have it from my sources, that he's back in Birmingham, 
He's locked himself in his bedroom. He's hiding under his duvet. He's crying his little eyes out. Well, this is Jack Xavier's music, so clearly uh, one of his sources isn't as reliable as he thought it might have been. Jack Xavier, of course, was attacked a couple of months ago by the mystery attacker that Craig Lambert was alluding to earlier. Suffering a fractured skull that kept him away from the ring for several months. Xavier appears to be back. Outside from looking in good shape, he looks to be absolutely furious. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Jack Xavier is going to want to find out who Jack, Jack, the attacker sorry, is. Jack, I didn't know you were here. Get off, Jack, 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 listen to me. Listen to me, hear me out. Jack, please, please, Jack. I'm on your side, Jack. I feel your pain. I understand somebody fractured your skull. I understand you missed out on Gold Rush. I understand you missed out on your All England title chance at New Frontiers. But that's no need to take it out on me, Jack. I care about you. I care about you, Jack. Jack, please let me go. Hear me out. Let me hear. Hear what I've got to say. Hear what I've got to say. Jack. You've got to understand. I'm not your enemy. Heck. Not even Dr. Dirk Feelgood's your enemy. Leave me alone, Jack! 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 He's got it, Jack! A vendetta, Jack! Vendetta, I'll find out who did this to you, Jack! I'll find out! I promise you, I vow. Please. I'm so close to finding out who attacked you. If I could find out tonight, I would. But I vow! I vow in front of all these people! I promise you! On my knees! I'm on my knees, Jack! I promise you, Sunday, July the 10th, by then, I will find out, I will expose who attacked you, and I will serve their head to you on a silver platter. I promise you. intimidating young faces in the FWA today. Formerly part of Alex Shane's bodyguard security team. We saw them for the first time on the first ever episode of FWA TV. They then turned on Alex Shane and joined the old school revolution. 
working now as the bodyguard of Flash Barker. He is the handsome stone punch. And now the boys sending him in. Alex Shane ducking their clothesline and firing back with a huge clothesline of his own. Turning Pyres inside out and sending him right to the outside with the clothesline. Sticks now running in with a back body drop, sending him too over the ropes. Alex Shane shouting out, show. The fans, of course, ready to respond in kind. Show Steeler, they chant. Alex Shane is one of the most charismatic wrestlers the FWA, nay, UK has ever seen. And a huge, gigantic springboard somersault plancher to the outside, taking out both the boys. And this match is taking a dramatic change for the better, in Alex Shane's eyes at least. Many critics from reviewing this match before it originally aired would have suggested that Alex Shane would have been taken apart pretty quickly. The boys, both intimidating wrestlers in their own right, as a team, they have proved almost unstoppable in the matches that they've had with the FWA and other promotions. They prove that their strength and their teamwork makes it them a team that are really quite hard to beat. Their problem solver, Fireman's carry into a double team did. Oh, and Alex Shane firing back there with a double noggin knocker, going ducking and then both shoulder blocking each other off the apron. And now Alex Shane pulling one of the members of the boys in. Yep, I believe that sticks. Sending him in with an Irish whip, somehow reversed, but no, Alex Shane with the upper hand, going for that pump handle into an ace crusher, dropping sticks right from his face. Right now for the cover, early one, two, he didn't hook the leg, and nevertheless, even if he had, Pires was there with a huge gore, right to the gut of Alex Shane, taking him right down. And now the expected outcome of the match is beginning to take place as the boys using their strength in numbers to overpower Alex Shane. Though individually the man is probably the strongest in the FWA against two men the size and calibre of the boys. It's really not that much of a contest but never count Alex Shane out even though Flyers has just been tagged in ready to take it to him with his hard hitting offence. Alex Shane has one of the biggest hearts in the FWA. And I think we've just seen one of the biggest sidewalk slams in the FWA. Dropping out of Shane right on his back, knocking all the wind out of him. But no, kicking out at two count, at two there. The show stealer still in this match, still ready to fight back. And the fans will always be behind him. Definitely with some of the greatest charisma in the FWA. He's so popular with the fans. Even when he's doing actions that the fans aren't too proud of, they find it really hard to boo this man, such as his charisma. Sticks there with a shoulder block and a leg drop, keeping him down. One, two, sticks two, failing to hook the leg. A basic wrestling error and really something that you should not do when you're in the ring with Alex Shane. Shot to the gut, Irish whip sending him in and a great big sleeper hold there from one of the biggest men in the FWA. Sleeper hold, Alex Shane. The wind has been taken out of him. That sleeper hold expertly applied there by Sticks. The carotid artery is not getting the blood to the head as it should do. Blood is being cut off from the brain. And Alex Shane, oh so quickly, is being taken out of the equation in this match. The referee raising his hand once. One. Raising his hand again. Two. If his hand drops for the third time, this match will be over in a much... Oh, but no! Alex Shane, he's still in this thing. He's leeching off the crowd, he's feeling their energy, he's feeling the adrenaline rush inside him. He's elbowed him out, ducking a clothesline, a firing that old, but a knee to the gut there from Sticks, quickly cutting off Alex Shane's comeback. And now, hooking the leg, one, two, he was really going for the win that time, the cover nice and tight, the leg being hooked there, Six trying to put him out of action, and once more, working on that head, working on that neck, cutting off the blood supply to the brain and the head. Alex Shane, his eyes are rolling back in his head, his arm is being raised, dropped once, but no, but no, Alex Shane shakes his head, rips his teeth, pulls in his stomach, sucks it all back up, leaps back to his feet, ducks one more clothesline, fires back, and there, an interesting manoeuvre from Alex Shane, a beautiful schoolboy roll up, and a big boot, a schoolboy, not what you would expect to see from Alex Shane, but that's a surprising array of technical abilities for a big man. But that's what people expect, a huge power slam, and then, with cat-like agility, a springboard into a twisting leg drop off the middle rope, one, two, a long two count there, Alex Shane perhaps stupendously managing to gain the advantage in this match, not too many people would bet on that happening, Irish whip reversed, and a huge, huge spine buster, dropping Alex Shane right on his back, compressing those vertebrae and simultaneously winding Alex Shane, knocking all the breath out of him, making it that much more easy 
They're much easier to gain a quick pinfall. Show, says Sticks. Knocking out Shane's chant. One of the most famous chants in the FWA. Many people have been able to raise their arms in adulation and shout out Show. Alex Shane not doing him much good now as he's being choked out by both members of the breed. Alex Shane trying to fight back, trying to grab hold of the ropes, trying to power himself out. Normally, I wouldn't. I would put Alex Shane in a power match against anyone in the FWA. But as I've said, the two of the boys working together almost as if they can read each other's mind. Such is the calibre of their teamwork. And Alex Shane is really being taken out slowly and methodically, but above all, effectively. His neck is being worked on, his upper body, his head, his neck, his shoulders, all being worked on by both members as we see. That Robert right on the ropes, using his own body weight and that of the ropes for leverage. Alex Shane being taken out. Quite frankly, I don't see him in this thing for too much longer. But no! Somehow he manages to roll back to his feet, lifting up huge jump into a sit-down powerbomb. A huge high-impact move, and Alex Shane is still in this thing. Slowly getting back up to his feet. He's managed to buy himself some precious time. However, Sticks always had the advantage in this thing. Because if they're at an equal, Sticks had the advantage because he can always tag out to Pliers. Or Pliers can always tag out to Sticks. Whereas Alex Shane is in that ring, he's on his own. He has nothing to rely on apart from his own native skill, whip cunning, and brute strength. Trying to get back up to his feet. Possibly rendered slightly dizzy. Maybe almost unconscious from the damage linked to his head and neck. That's those sleeper holds early on in the match. But no, Alex Shane getting back up, blocking a punch, kick. Right hand, another kick. Come on, he says, but no. A cheap low blow there from Sticks. Taking the easy way out. An old school maneuver. Shot right to the nether regions of the show stealer. And now, as I said, the strength in numbers. Tag in to pliers. Now, they're both sending him in. Double Irish whip. And it's the problem solver, that fireman's carry, straight into the DDT, dropping Alex Shane straight on his head. The problem solver defeated many opponents in the past, and now look at them, they're both quite cocky. And a nonchalant one-footed pin? Plyers does not look very happy about that. It was an obscene tactical error on their part. And now they're getting into a little pushing contest, and Alex Shane taking advantage of this fact by a roll up. One, two, but no, they kicked out. That was really quite poor teamwork on the boys' part. Not what you'd expect from a team of that calibre. Shots to the back, continuing to beat down the show stealer. They really could have had this match won if they'd only taken full advantage of the problem solver. Now going for another one of their patented effective double team manoeuvres, but now a slam. And now Sticks getting pushed right into the bread basket of flyers. And the Shane Station, the Shane Station spinning wheel kick. What an amazing manoeuvre. Plyers has just sailed around eight feet, landing right flat on his back, hard on the floor. The fans have gone wild. The show stealer is still in this thing. You can never count this man out. It seems like there is nothing the man cannot do. No matter how great the odds, no matter how bad things look for Alex Shane, you can always count on something amazing going on. Alex Shane firing back there with a boot to the gut. And Irish Whip sending him in, but no, a duck. But I'm picking it up, could this be the one night stand? Yes, the one night stand, that fireman's carry into the sit out slow driver. One, two, was that three? That was surely, oh my goodness, but no. Fires just pulled the referee out, and here we see Flash Barker in the momentary distraction. Flash Barker, I don't believe Alex Shane has seen him yet. Flash Barker pulling him, what's going on here? Flash Barker standing on the apron. Alex Shane giving him that look of disgust, a punch. I'm not quite sure. And there's Jody Fleisch. I can't see what's going on. Flash Barker just hit somebody. Jody Fleisch now pulling him back down. Pliers going down. What's going on? One, two, three. I'm not sure what's happened, but Alex Shane has just won this thing. Alex Shane is the victor. Flash Barker's interference obviously he didn't go too well. Sticks looks to be unconscious there. Pliers walking back out. He doesn't seem too happy about this. He's incredibly frustrated. Show, says Alex. Show, says the entire crowd. I'm sure a couple of you fans at home saying show as well. Because Alex Shane has done the impossible here tonight. He has beat both men. He has beat Flash Barker. And the new school are really going strong at the moment. Him see on the retro cam. What's going on? Oh, yes. Sticks tried to hold Alex Shane back. But the fist of stone punch put him squarely from the temple, knocking him out. The knocking knocker sending them both right down. 
Alex Shane is leaving this match the victor. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, in a short bit of information, Flash Barker has just fired the boys from the old school as they failed to defeat the show stealer, Alex Shane. And here we see Johnny Storm riding around with his fans outside the ring, leaping over the barricades in preparation for the upcoming flag match between Johnny Storm, the Wonder Kid, and the Colombian, George Castano. Lovely athletic somersault into the ring there from Johnny Storm. The fans love him to bits, and I think most people would contend that Johnny Storm loves himself to bits as well. But no one can really blame him with so much talent, so much charisma, so much high flying prowess, and technical mat wrestling prowess. Johnny Storm really has it all here in the FWA. But then again, his opponent has it all as well George Castano, the Colombian. Not as well loved as Johnny Storm, and I think that hurts George just a little bit. However, no one can argue with his mat wrestling, his power wrestling, even his high flying. George Castano is like a slightly more beefed up Johnny Storm with a head of an attitude to go with it. George Castano here making his way in. He's looking fired up tonight. He's looking pretty angry. But what's this? Johnny Storm standing up on up there on the stage. I'm not sure if George Castano has seen him yet. He's still there. He's still, yeah. Oh, I don't believe he's seen him, but yeah, he turns around there. And a huge storm, Frankenstein, taking him right down to the floor. And Johnny Storm, of course, taking another bit of time to hold fire some of his fans. And now the flag match is underway. Storm hurling Castano over that guardrail, right to the outside, and taking it to him as fast as he can in a way that only the Wonder Kid can do. Right up the steps, into the bleachers, rolling around up there, it's quite hard to see, but I believe the Storm still has the advantage. Yes, Castano just hurled down those stairs, the Storm continuing to take the fight to Castano on the outside. Oh my goodness! Hit him right in the mini Castano there, Crotched him right on the guardrail, a couple of chops just for good measure. Storm taking it back into the ring, back into the confines of the barricades where the match really should take place. But no, perhaps trying to throw him back outside. This so far has not been a technical wrestling clinic. These two could perform such a match, but no, it seems that the Wonder Kid is preferring to just have a bit of fun rolling around on the outside. And now choking out Castano with a towel. All Johnny Storm's actions, of course, being met with rapturous applause from his fans on the outside. And now finally, this match is going to the ring where it should really take place. Wonder Kid, of course, just taking that little bit of extra time, hang around on the outside. But no, that time, no. Baseball slide, missed by Castano. Castano, not sure what happened. A huge float up and a gigantic dive to the outside. A ridiculously high somersault right onto George Castano's head there from the Wonder Kid. He really should be collecting frequent fly miles with the height he gains on some of those dives to the outside. And with the distance and the height, it's a wonder the Wonder Kid is still walking. But then again, that's why they call him the Wonder Kid. The fans cheering him on. Johnny back on his feet. You can't be going for it again, surely. No. Oh dear me. Just got crutched on that top turnbuckle. Perhaps in retribution for what happened in the guard route earlier in the match. And now George Castano ready to take the fight to the Wonder Kid for the first time. Lifting up perhaps the suplex. Yep, George Castano has a huge array of suplex type manoeuvres. Snap suplex, Northern Lights suplexes, Fisherman suplexes, all of them. And as we see here, it's quite a nice array of high flying manoeuvres as well. A huge high cross body, but no. Andy Coyne reminding George Castano that there are no pins in this match as it is indeed a flag match and the only way to win is to grab the flag of your country. Picking back up, picking the one kid back up, perhaps go for another suplex, lifting him up high and the fans wondering where George Castano's visa might be. But no, going back, a rear waist lock into the ropes, slide under, baseball slide, oh, and a shot hard to the gut. Double underhook suplex into a sit-out power bomb there. A butterfly bomb from George Castano, dropping Johnny right on his head and shoulders. It's a little known fact that Johnny Storm suffered a concussion from that very same manoeuvre earlier on in the year. 
and it looks like George Castano will be looking to further the damage done there. And now George looking to end the match early, climbing up the turnbuckle, aiming to retrieve his flag from the pole, and a drop kick right to the backside of George Castano. What could Storm be going for there? A big arm drag taking down the Colombian hard to the mat. Now in a Mexican switch there from the Colombian, and Storm has just been dropped right on his face. Shut your mouth, says George the Colombian, who never has too kindly words for the fans, who never respond too favourably favorably for him. And I think that hurts him a little bit compared to the Wonder Kid, who really is quite well loved by the fans here in attendance. Referee Andrew Coyne trying to get George back into the match and stop engaging in verbal sparring with the fans. George quite happy to do so as he places Johnny into the corner, swings him in with my whip, aiming to fire that up low. Johnny, his first given opportunity, and um, to reach up and grab that Union Jack. And then a draw out of the corner. One minute they're both up, next minute they're both down. I don't know who got the worst of it there, but both men are definitely down for the minute. It looks like referee Steve Linsky may be administering the 10 count. Well, when there's as much momentum in a match as that, as that you just saw there, and they do double clotheslines, both men's head may as well be in the third, fifth row. But now both men get into their feet, dug up first, far on to Christopher Daniels, though, who's fighting right back with him, and he ducks the, misses the clothesline. Couple of elbows. Matching punch for punch, Nick, a couple of back elbows there from the fallen angel and he goes to roll him out of nowhere two no and Christopher Daniels with a pin one, of his own two no double the pin again well they're gonna be and then one two one two oh Nick how many pinfall was that I can't quite remember I haven't seen so many variations of the roll-ups since I was oh wait a minute he's setting up nearly chaos fury but he sends him to the right wait sends him back and here we go oh wait revolution DDT he managed to hit it come on Doug all you've got to do surely all you've got to do is roll over I know you've been through hell so far but all you've got to do is pin him oh the revolution DDT it's all she wrote Doug's crawling over one, one two no he managed to kick out Nick have you ever seen anybody kick out of the revolution before very 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 Rarely, Tony. I think only one, maybe two men have done it. But whoever's on that list, Fallen Angels just being added to it. Doug Williams cannot quite believe what has happened. He's holding up his hand. He's like, surely that was a three. What more can I possibly do to retain my title and keep the British pride here at home in England? Wait, send him to the right. Christopher Daniels. No, oh, the Angel wins! He's managed to hit it. Angel wins. Surely now it's got to be over. It's got to be all over. One, two, two new no, champion. No! Doug Williams managed to kick out of Christopher Daniels finisher. I can't believe what's happening. Nick, I'm losing my voice. I'm so caught up in this. I'm I so excited, over Tony. Soon. Both men are fighting for the title. The hard way. He's going for a German suplex, but the fallen angel can't go get his reverse. Done. Surely he's going to be going for it. This has got to be it. It's all over. It looks Doug like Williams he's trying to go the Revolution DDT. He's fighting for it, Tony. Here Can we he go. get it? Here we go. He's going. He's going. He's going, idiot. He's got it. One, two, two. Yes! It's all over. Doug Williams is still the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. The Fallen Angel could not quite get the job done tonight. What a fantastic match. And the exclamation mark of this match was the rolling German Chaos Fury Suplex. Here is your still the Heavyweight Champion of the Frontier Wrestling Alliance, Doug the Anarchist Williams. An awesome display, Nick, from both men. You know, Christopher Daniels wasn't the man tonight, but there's nothing safe that Christopher Daniels could not come back to the FWA in the future and best the title of whoever is champion in the future. An awesome display there from both men. I'm almost losing my voice at the moment. I'm a little bit speechless. This was an emotional match. What a congratulations, Doug Williams. You certainly deserve any accolades as a result of this. But the question is, Tony, Doug Williams has been fending off the challengers one by one. Who's going to be able to take the title off the anarchist? Who knows, Nick? We'll have to wait and see. It seems like Christopher Daniels having a few disagreements with his manager. But wait, Christopher Daniels, he's coming back to the ring, Tony. He's coming back to the ring as the fans are giving both men a standing ovation. What could Christopher Daniels possibly want in the ring with Doug Williams after the hell they've just been through? You don't think he's up for a rumble now, do you, Tony? I, I mean, why is Daniels back in the ring? I don't know. I think we're about to find out. Doug Williams is offering the hand. Are we going to see the right thing done here from the fallen angel? Doug Williams, an honourable champion indeed, offering that 
the hand to the fallen angel. The, an the angel with the title belt in his hand. What a class act. There we see it, Nick. That's what it's all about. It's about the respect and honor between two mat technicians. What a wonderful thing we just see. But it looks like we're out of time and we got to go. Tony Giles, I'm Nick London. Thank you and good night.